the way I got released was not the ideal way of what people thought. I was at a club 13 years. You'd like to think they'd bring you in for a meeting, they'd sit you down and, yeah. you know, maybe say thank you for your services so where you can go, we're going to help you now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but I actually got misled that I was going to get a contract. And they said, listen, keep coming in. So I kept coming in with the first team. First team stopped. They're like, keep coming in with the under-21s. So I kept coming in with the under-21s. Yeah. The under sixteen, I'm coming over. No one, no one was coming in anymore. So I was like, I'll keep coming in if you want me to. Like, no, oh, go, go home. We ring you. So I was like, yeah, no problem. So I went home, and uh, I was actually watching Hollyoaks at the time. One of my friends got me into it. And oh shit, it's terrible. So I was watching it. My dad came home. Yeah. All right, Luke. How are my dad? Carried on watching. He goes, I got something to tell you. So yeah. He went, uh, you've been released by the Watford Academy. All right, everyone. Uh, I am back, and today I am. Talking shit and rocking all over the world with Mr. Luke or Nine. Uh, thank you for coming on, my friend. We waited about three years uh, for this one. And the rest. <laughs> I'm actually, I said, uh, I think I'm really looking forward to this because I see myself with a lot of energy and I've seen a lot of your stuff. So when two people like that with Shh. the energy in the room could explode. Me, she could go off. Yeah, Pull that mic close out of your mouth for me, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the sound's much better. Um, my first question for you is what is it like? To play for by far the greatest team the world has ever seen. We could be doing a whole podcast on this now. <laughs> Me and my son talk about that. You know where you go to all these matches all over and every team sings that song. It's, we were singing it in League Fucking One. I'm singing. I'm singing it as well when, when, <laughs> when the fans are singing it. What's it like? It's it's really really hard to describe um, for so many reasons. You know, I, I I sit there and I couldn't have pictured this as a kid. Um, and to get to the stage now, like it's it's immense pride. The I have to, the way to describe it is the buzz that you get from it is huge. Yeah. Like it's a huge buzz, even away, but home. Like the buzz it gives you, stepping out in front of that many fans, wearing the iconic Sunderland shirt that I've you know I grew up seeing it, seeing it on Premiership years. Yeah, um, fucking hell, they were a long time ago. Yeah, well, but like to, like I grew up seeing that. Yeah. And to pitch myself as a kid when I was watching football, thinking I'll be in the northeast wearing that one day. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you don't quite put them things together. So for it to happen, um, so with that buzz, then there's clearly the other side of it, though, right? I'm always interested in that because of what I do. You get these, you get the big high of fucking being on stage, but then there's the other side of it that comes with it, all the shit. Yeah, well, yeah. So I, I, you get that in you know any job when you, when you have a huge high, you're going to have the huge low. Yeah. The, the way I experienced my huge low was when I got my injury. Because obviously, when you when I got my injury, you go from getting experience of these huge highs, and then that's taken away gone. through injury, and it's gone. It's like, okay, where do I get that? Yeah, that was a shoulder injury, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was out for uh, not not a huge amount of time, but enough to, enough to ment mentally uh, yeah. ruin me for a little bit. What did you learn about yourself, or, or what did you learn about yourself during that time of being injured? Probably the most I've probably ever learned about myself uh, ever. You know, I, I look back at it at the time, you're like, why is this happening to me? You question it, you wish you could, the pain would disappear. But yeah. looking back at it now, uh, there's a few scenarios that come to my head, but that especially, the, the amount I learned as a player, yeah. as a human being, as yeah. a dad, as a friend, uh, is the, one of the greatest learnings for me because uh, I've been injured before, but I think the older you get, maybe the more you have or the more you experience, maybe the more to lose because you have- Time's taken a little bit more. I'm not sure. I've like I've talked about it a lot, but you st every time I talk about the injury, you go down so many different avenues. Yeah. Um, but to not go into like a huge amount of detail, what what happened was, was when I got my injury, what we just described there about the huge buzz. Yeah. You go you go get them huge buzzes. You get the connection from the fans. You know, you're playing week in week out. You might yeah. get a good game. You get that buzz. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're in around the changing rooms, you talk about the tactics. You're involved. What do you reckon about next week? What do you yeah. think about last game? You're contributing. You're contributing. As soon as you get an injury, everything stops. You know, you're you don't get the buzz yeah. from the weekend, which that buzz is. Uh, you, you can't get that sort of buzz. That's why people play in it. Yeah, yeah. That's why people yeah. can't leave the yeah. game or when they finish. Yeah. I think they want to stay in it because you're, you're searching for that buzz, yeah. which I think it's amazing. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I am to get that once, let alone how many times I got it, is yeah. uh, something I wish I could bottle up and pass to every Sunderland fan because I yeah. know I know they love to be in my shoes. But equally trying to search for that buzz if you're always constantly looking for it i think it's a dangerous thing mm. but maybe i became more aware of that when i got injured because the buzz goes yeah 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 um yeah i didn't even you don't even think about that you're not just missing the match are you, well, you you're work, not just out of the team you, well you work a week for yeah. those moments yeah and it, listen, if those moments don't come where you don't win 
everything goes right, how do we get back to that state? You chase that yeah. in a in a nice way, yeah. in a healthy way. You want that. Yeah. Um, you get the buzz of coming out at the tunnel when the game, nothing's been kicked, so you still get the buzz. But the, the actual buzz really comes from the win. Yeah. Because you, you know, the, the feeling it brings to the team, to the fans, to the area is huge. Yeah. So you, yeah. when you don't get it, you're like, great. Well, let's go put it right this week to yeah, get yeah, that buzz yeah. again. But the buzz stops just like that out mm -hmm. of the blue. So you could be on a high, 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 and then it just stops. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, well, that's a little bit gone. Um, your contribution, your contribution to the team. Yeah. You're no longer contributing. You're just on the side. You're watching everybody go out. Yeah. Uh, your love and connection potentially to the fans. Um, you know, my friend Rob Blackburn. He, uh, are we allowed to say that he's in the he's in the room? I don't know. It's, <laughs> I don't know. it's really weird talking about someone. He's, he's in the room. He's sitting the over there. If you're on camera, yeah, he's, he's, in, yeah. he's in the corner. Rob's coming on the next episode. He is. Yeah. Uh, so Rob actually going through it all quickly. I got my injury. Yeah. And well, I, I wanted to throw this in. I've been dying to see it. I remember you had that injury. It was a dislocated shoulder that started, right? And then yeah. I swear, I messaged you straight after. I said, did you get your fucking shoulder put back in and then stay on the pitch? Twice. Twice, in one game? Yeah. I saw that and I was like, if that was in the Premier League, right, there'd have been a fucking ambulance, <laughs> there'd have been a fucking helicopter on the pitch, yeah, and you was... fucking just popped it back in and wore some fucking ridiculous bandage that probably didn't even do anything. No, that, so we got to a stage where I should have had surgery. Yeah. So the surgeon said after the first dislocation, you have a very high chance, about seventy percent chance of re seventy eighty percent chance of re dislocating. Yeah. So I just saw thirty chance not happening. I took that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a re I'm a real optimist. Yeah. Thirty percent <laughs> yeah. chance it's not going to happen. Yeah. And then uh, it happened again. Yeah. In preseason, but yeah. I just I was out of contract and I, I had options to go elsewhere yeah. to go higher in the champ. But then Lee Johnson was the gaffer, yeah. and I loved what he wanted. To, how he wanted me to be involved yeah. and I wanted that promotion yeah. and I was like I can't leave Yeah. so I said Gaffer I'm so we, we were still in League 1 then yeah still in League yeah, 1 still we just in, lost, to Lincoln, have been, uh... lost to Lincoln in the semis oh yeah. was that the fucking 2020 COVID. was that that Covid thing Covid had right. a few fans in uh, Maguire lost, was playing for Lincoln money. lost no was he not no not that stage he wasn't we lost 3-2 there was a bit of shit I was, didn't he score against someone or something alright that's all right. so we lost 3-2 and then I out of the playoffs I yeah. was out of contract Yeah. and then um yeah, I, 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 I wanted to stay. Yeah. Uh, and Lee Johnson was a huge uh, part of that, the way he said, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. And I loved it. And I was yeah. like, I'm not leaving. We're, we're going to go get promoted. But then, uh, so I made this promise to him that I'm going to give everything to get promoted. Yeah. And then came back from preseason. I dislocated in the first game of preseason. Oh, shit. Sure. The funny thing was, he, he was amazing. He actually put a microphone in the back of my uh, GPS to help me with my communication. Yeah. So... We layered it back over the game. And I'm going to sidetrack here, but this is how good he was. But we layered it back over the game because he wanted me to constantly work on my communication. And he said I kept going silent. So we we rewatched the game back. With you the never went silent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we, we we watched the game back with the commentary, but yeah. you heard my shoulder go. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, so I was like, this isn't, like, I'm not wearing a mic again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's popped out. Yeah. And I'm, I'm devastated. I'm going, oh, no. So I've gone back to see the surgeon. The surgeon's gone. I said, like, what are the chance of really dislocating? And he goes, 100%. I went, no, 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 come on, like 99, give us a, yeah. give us a 0. 0.1. Yeah. It's never 100%. He goes, yeah. no, honestly, it's 100%. Yeah. I, I kind of ignored it a little bit. And I thought, I, I, I know it sounds silly, but I thought, well, maybe, maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he's a shoulder specialist. Are you still out of contract at this point? No, no, so I just, just signed. Just so signed a new contract. I was just thinking about this, like, would it have been different if you'd signed a longer, like, do you know what I mean? Do you know, like, or are you I, taking more risks when you, when there's more likelihood of you not getting your contract review? Yeah, well, I'm, like, I'm a man of my word, and I said yeah. to him, I'll give him it. I'll give you everything to yeah. get promoted. Yeah. Um, and we had the plan, like we talked about it. Well, I was on the phone from hours during the off season. Yeah. Because I had options to go to the champ, and yeah. I turned that down because there's no place like up here. You can't compare. Yeah. So even though I was, I was chasing one as being the champ. Yeah. It didn't feel right to, yeah. to jump to another team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think I would have been able to, yeah, to live with that decision in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, we, me and me and the gaffer spoke at the time, made a plan. Mm -hmm. But so when it happened, I was like, oh, I'm not sticking to the plan. If I derailed, yeah. If I go get surgery now, so we said, right, we'll we'll manage it. And it, the things we did was ridiculous. Like we taped, we taped everything. Like I remember. I must even, seen it. Was I'm moving like massive. this. Oh yeah, it was the tape was the tape was. I couldn't really move. Yeah. And the burns I got from the tape taking it all off, like my skin changed color. But what, I think it was the Accrington game where we managed to rebuild to a point, mm -hmm. and then we went into the Accrington game. And if you actually watch it back, it's the ball's got crossed in. I'm marking, 
And as the guy's gone to head, what I do is I tend to push the guy under the ball. So as he goes to head, he goes underneath it and yeah, yeah, misses yeah. it. Yeah. So I've uh, I've pushed him under the ball, but as I've pushed, my shoulders push back and lifted out of the yeah. socket. <sighs> he's headed in the top corner. Yeah. I've gone down the floor, like just holding my arm that's now out of the socket. Yeah. Devastated. Yeah. I don't know if I'm more devastated. My shoulders come out of my mouth. Oh, right. Everyone's looking at me. No one knows what's going on. And I'm yeah. like, but it's already come out once or twice, and I've seen the physio how he puts it back in. So yeah. I've just kind of pulled down it. It's gone back in. Yeah. I look over to the physio, like, I think I'm coming off here. No. Yeah. And we just. So anyway, then fast forward another five minutes. I've gone down for a penalty. Arms yeah. gone out, popped back out again. Oh, fucking hell. So I'm down on the floor again, yeah. and their player actually run over and clawed my eye. And like um, had a go at me for diving, so I'm like, oh, I'm in a mess here. Yeah, pulled it back in. I've gone over it. Yeah, it's happened again. Yeah. Anyway, half time happens, and uh, I just assumed at the time that someone else would come on. Yeah. That's me done. Yeah. And the gaffer actually came up to me and went, Luke, we need you this second half. We need you. Yeah. And I went, Yeah, no problem. Playing centre back then or right back? Uh, midfield. On oh, midfield. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Didn't think that one did you? I think I was midfield. No, I'm midfield. Yeah, yeah I played midfield at this time. <laughs> She goes, Luke, we need you in this game. Like, we, we really need you. So, yeah, no problem. So, went out for the second half, and I, I just didn't use my left arm. Yeah. And from that point on, we, I, like, I did quite well second half, and we won the game 2-1. Yeah. We said we could manage this. I just can't use my left arm. Yeah. We realised, literally, this was the perfect angle. Any force, it would just lift out. So, we said, right, we can't do that. We need surgery, but we'll manage it for as long as we can. We'll try and get to the end of the season. Yeah. The idea was to get promoted, yeah. then go get it in the summer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so then that happened. Um, but it, we got to the point where we were taping my fingers. So, and that was a visual cue for every time I to use my left hand. To oh, it, shit. Pull it back. So yeah. you'll see a lot of photos where I've just yeah. got taped fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was a visual cue to, like, pull it back. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but it, it got difficult when I couldn't hold my little one. Yeah. Um, and it kind of started to escalate over there because I couldn't hold my little one. My yeah. quality of life was starting to impact. Yeah. Come play golf. I was having nightmares. Didn't you do something in golf or something? I'm sure there's a rumour going around that you desiccated your shoulder playing golf. Uh, that, that? that actually sounds like me, what? but it's not. <laughs> did that happen? No, I don't I'm sure there was a rumour no. going around that you... I did it, do, I did it during a pull-up. So it, it came out... Oh, the shit. So I, did it during, like, I did a pull-up and I went out of my physical... My shoulders went in and out. Fucking hell. So it got to the stage where I had nothing there. Yeah. The joint was gone. That's why you need surgery. Oh, to shit. To find the right okay. angle, it would just lift out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and it, yeah, so... So did you kind of know the surgery was coming? Yes. What are some what are some things that tools that you use mental tools that you obviously got from Mr. Rob Blackburn, your partner in the Inner Game Academy? What are some tools that you got from him? Because a lot of people, I'm kind of you don't have to be a footballer to fucking to get something from this. Like there's a lot of people who've had something taken away from them, or they can't do the thing that they love to. I've just had it because I told me Peck. So when you can't do the thing that you love doing, that gives you a lot of joy. That fulfills you, that kind of gives you that sense of purpose. What are some tools that you've used to kind of keep yourself yeah, not losing your shit in that time? Well, I didn't lose it until the surgery came. So I played, my final game was when their manager, I played left back and their manager went, put it on the left back. His, shoulder, <laughs> his <laughs> shoulder's gone. Oh, fuck. And people were on corners trying to pull my shoulder out. Oh really? Yeah. So I was I was getting to a point now where I was getting quite sad. Yes. Um, I was having nightmares at night of my shoulder coming out. I'd wake up. You know when your arms a bit dead. Yeah. I'd wake up and I'd be like thinking it was out. So yeah. I was getting to a stage where I wasn't sleeping. Um, couldn't really hold my little girl. So it started there a little yeah. bit. And then when I said I, I came off that uh, after the shrews began, I said, Dad, I, I can't do any more. The gaffer was like, You've done enough for us. Yeah. Go get the surgery. So I got the surgery, and everything's still fine. And then I started to do my rehab, and then it just hit me where. Oh, like this feeling of I don't know, I still don't know how to describe it, but it was a helpless feeling just started. To not like, useful anymore. Not useful anymore. Yeah. I, I think started, a lot of men get that, you know, in their lives. That I don't feel useful anymore. It started really slowly. Yeah, like little things here and there, and then like it was suddenly. I tried ignoring it. Yeah, that was my problem at first. Tried ignoring it. I was yeah. like, yeah, I was, I was that. I'm, I'm the energy of our household. Yeah, I'd like to say I'm the energy um, at the training round. Like that's what I like to bring to people. Yeah. So I would fake it a little bit. I'd still be the energy. But yeah. inside, I could feel myself. Uh, you're, acting a little, you're acting a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. I'd feel that. And I'd be like, no, block that. That's, you know, yeah, it's not yeah, happening. Yeah. And it started to block it a little bit too yeah. much to the point where, fast forward probably a month from then, I uh, I was at home with my wife and kid at the time because I only had one kid. And I broke down and just cried in my basement. Mm -hmm. um, and my wife's gone, what's, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't know. I can feel it coming up to me now. Yeah. And she was like, what's wrong? I was like, I have no idea. 
like, I have no idea. Yeah. And I just broke down in her arms. Anyway, I said, listen, I'm fine. Honestly, let's go upstairs. So I went upstairs and I'm talking, you know, there to there, 10 second walk. Yeah. I just tried blocking it and it hit me again. Yeah. And I've, I've just, I was just gone. Yeah. She goes, what? I was like, I don't know. I've just got this pain or this uh, feeling inside me that I can't shake. And yeah. I, I just, I'm seeing everything in negative. Like yeah. I had all, every negative lens on possible. Yeah. And I just tried to block it and block it and block it, suppress it, suppress it, suppress it. And yeah. I think at that moment it just all came out. Yeah. And uh, my wife's brilliant. Um, she she knew I was struggling and she actually phoned Rob at the time. Yeah. So Rob Luke Media. So I don't know who, did she phone you and get you on Zoom? Well, I didn't get you on Zoom because I was in a bad state. So I don't know who got Rob on Zoom. Yeah, she phoned <laughs> Rob and we ended up on Zoom or FaceTime. Yeah. And uh, at the time Rob coached me through it mm-hmm. very quickly because I don't think I even admitted to Rob yeah. at the time what I was going through. Yeah, and uh, he coached me through it when I was pretty much um, in tears at the time. Yeah, and yeah, the lessons he gave me then were yeah like a game. Gi- but that was that conversation was the first time the pain, which is I really find it hard to describe, started to lift out lift a, little a little bit. bit yeah. I started to really like tap into and it. I, and I bet all that Rob will be really fucking good at this. Actually, he just probably shifted your attention from. What wasn't going so well? What was negative? What you couldn't do? Yeah, I, it shifted what you were focused on. Probably he just went, mate. That's so normal. And I went, ah, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give you some relief. That yeah, it was the relief. I felt so it come I out. Thought, you even I said just, it there. Yeah, I just thought I was the only person going through yeah. this because yeah. I felt I felt I didn't feel like I was being a good dad. A do good you partner. do you guys that if there's a few of you injured at the same time? No. Oh, really? Whatever you about to say, it's a no. Yeah. Because I was just thinking. Jordan Willis was injured for fucking two years. So this is the this is the scary thing that because I'm really close with Jordan. Yeah, and uh, I actually haven't told many people about this, but um, so I got injured, and I I can count probably on one one hand how many times I've I've drunk in my life. A wedding, um, that was a good time, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, when we got promoted, like it's it's not really for me. Yeah. Uh, at all. Yeah. So I got injured, and I started to have these. This this feeling of overwhelm just hit me, yeah. and it was heavy, and it I didn't like the thoughts I was having, yeah. and I was really negative, and yeah. So this was starting to happen anyway. We had we had a uh, players and partners team meal in Newcastle, mm-hmm. and I was injured, just doing my rehab by myself, mm-hmm. nowhere near the team, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that's mad. That I think most people won't even get that. What you're saying here about you're injured, you're nowhere near the team. Yeah. Well, I like to think I know football, but I wouldn't think that. Oh, you're yeah, you're. I'll explain that in a second. But I w- we went on this, we went for a team meal, and I was sitting there. I, I was very close not to go in. Yeah, like I was. I remember I I got hit with the feeling just before I went out, and mm. my wife going to me, "We don't have to go." I said, "No, no, we're gonna go." So anyway, I had a drink, and I had another one, and I could feel the, like yeah, I I I am I, the way it's, since this has happened, I You'll see. Get, I bet you get drunk really quickly as well, do you? Yeah, because I don't drink, uh. so I see the world in a different light because of this. But yeah. like I had a few. Because I numbed the pain yeah. for that split second yeah. of the whole injury, the whole... Made you feel a little bit better. The, all the nightmares, people pulling my arm out, the, yeah. not contributing to the team. Yeah. And uh, I remember like we went to a club after mm-hmm. and I didn't want that feeling to go. And I, I, I now see why people do it regularly. Yeah. I see why people um, why people might gamble mm-hmm. because it's, a f- it's to relieve the pain. Mm-hmm. for a, It's a quick fix. Mm-hmm. And that scared mm-hmm. the hell out of me. I was like, that's not me. Yeah. But for a second, I, I saw the world in a whole new light where yeah. maybe before this happened to me, I would have been like, why are they doing that? They have no yeah, control. Yeah, 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 and yeah. then you get to there and you start doing it and you like, you maybe have empathy a bit more. Yeah. Or you have an understanding that, okay, we all don't have this work worked out. I think it's powerful understanding why people do what they do. Yeah. And it's not, we're not like, we're all very quick to judge. Yeah. And when you go through something like that, it changes your lens a little bit. Yeah. Like, well, instead of pointing your fingers going, oh, you should have, Maybe a connection there is yeah. like I needed help. Yeah. Um, I needed someone to help me through and my wife was and, and Rob did. Yeah. But at the time when I didn't know, I was like, I had these feelings, I was like, I actually need help. Yeah. But I had that escape for that that night. Yeah. yeah and that yeah. was me trying to and I you, you think you're gonna go to bed one day and it will just wake up and go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually you need to do the work through it. Yeah. And that's where Rob came in. So yeah. fast forward a week or so. But I was with that night out with some good friends like George mm-hmm. and I tell George everything. Yeah. But I didn't tell him about this. And he, we, we talk about, we talk about everything now. Yeah. And he found it scary. The fact that he knows me and we talked about everything. Yeah. And yet he didn't even see, I sat next to him. 
And he didn't even see that that night. That's, that's how mad. scary. That's how scary. Like, and it's one of the reasons why we set up the Inner Game Academy. It's yeah. like, well, I said to my wife, I'm pretty. You know, I read a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Sorry, I read a lot of books. Yeah, I quite open now because I've come from a place where I never used to be. Yeah. I'm on a journey completely different, and yet that still hit me hard. Yeah. What, what must other people be going through? Is it quite hard for footballers that, I mean, it's been happening a lot more recently. I mean, you had Deli Ali come out and start talking about shit. You had Stephen Bartlett. Did you see the one with Ivan Tony? Yeah. I thought that was awesome. Like yeah. these, it's hard. Is it hard for a footballer to be open like that? Uh, I think the first one's the hardest one. So I went through the injury. Yeah. And was that the first real injury in your career? At an age where I, I understood what I was going through, yeah. uh, when when it happened to me, a young little injury. Yeah. But I think I needed to be a bit older, and have a little bit more in terms of family and more games. Yes. I needed more to have, to, more to lose. Yeah, more to lose. Yeah, that, I totally yeah. get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I when we when Rob coached me through it, yeah, he said, right, not many people know what you've just done. Mm -hmm. Your wife, your mum and dad, mm -hmm. me. He goes, you need to now. If you are, if you if you're serious about setting up an academy mm -hmm. and you want to help kids, mm -hmm. then there's no better no better way than sharing what you just went through. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I was like, yeah, no, no, nah, Rob, no, nah, no. Nah. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, he's kind of right, he's kind of right. And I was like, yeah, but Rob, no, no. Nah. Yeah. He goes, go on, like, do it. So yeah. I was like, I can't. So anyway, he types out a really a post, me holding my shoulder, and a real long message of yeah. everything Rob coached me through. Yeah. And it was ready to go. I couldn't press send. Yeah. And he was like, why not? I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> and I was like, I could easily just not. Like, why Why would I? Why do I want to yeah, open yeah, yeah, up yeah, these yeah. can of worms for everyone to point and judge? And yeah. I don't need to. Like, I've been through it now. So why do I need to? Yeah. So he was like, well, you said you want to help people. Yeah. So why not? Like, you can't say you want to help people and not mm -hmm. share one of your, like, mm -hmm. that's not coaching. That's just, sh that's you going, doing the Instagram, showing all the Sharing, what, sharing the highlights, yeah. yeah. If you want to yeah. be a real, you know, if you want to be a real you know, leader and you want to yeah. be a coach, then you've got to show the whole package. Yeah. And that's, you know, everyone always says they want to show the whole package, but really that's the hardest thing to do is showing, it's easy showing the, that side of it, the ups. The downs is like, you know, how many people do you follow on Instagram? It's like pictures, everything's good. Everything's well, me, everything's I had the, good. I've got a video that's got 12 million views about me talking about suicide. I actually had the video for 18 months before I posted it because I was worried about what people would yeah. think. I've worried about me mum and dad seeing it. What if me friends see it? What if me fucking, what if me nan sees it and stops me pocket money or something? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that, that fear's there. So we dro did you, you dropped the pulse, right? Dro yeah, dropped it. What happened? Well, the funny thing is the same with you. It has the most use. Even the ones like lifting the trophy, it doesn't have as use. It doesn't have as much connection as the yeah. ones that. Yeah. But it's paradoxical. Because people can relate to it more, I think. Yeah. Yeah. People can't relate maybe as much to the highs, but the, the lows, I think everyone goes through different highs. Yeah. Yeah. The lows, I think, the highs are very different. Yeah. I think the lows are very interconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, agree. I think we all go through a lot of similar well, that's stuff. That's what I was saying about the injury. You can't compare winning the fucking the, the League One playoff final. A lot of people can't comprehend that, but they can understand having something taken away from them that they love. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that I think it all, it all accumulates and adds to the yeah. to the down a little bit more. So anyway, so Rob, we everything I got coached, we put into a post. Yeah. And it took me a while, but I finally hit the post button. Yeah. And the connection I got was ridiculous. I'm talking players I've never played with. Play, really? I've played with players I've never played with. Premier League. Yeah. Championship. Abroad. Shit. Just reaching out either with the same thing saying, mate, that was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Or, mate, I went through the exact same thing. Fair play to you coming out with it. Yeah. Or even better, which, which, which kind of I liked even more was, I'm going through something very similar right now. Right now, yeah. This has really helped put things into perspective. Yeah. Um, but the, I don't know if it's the same as you. When you went to press posts, all that fear. Oh, I didn't check my phone for about oh, three days <laughs> after I posted it. Oh, yeah, I so put it me. on and I was like, fuck that. He was messaging me going, have you checked? Have you checked? Like, Absolutely not. I'm not checking. I'm not checking. I'm not checking. I've, I've ever played my Mate, phone. I've ended up with a whole 10 minute section in my fucking live theater show where I share all the negative comments that I got. Yeah. Like, because it's fun. But I've ended up, fucking hell, I've got a whole section in my book. I've got a whole keynote ba based on that I had this video that I knew was powerful, but I was like, shit, what if people, was there any negative reaction to it? No. Was there not? None? No, I'd say. Oh, I've got like, you should have jumped in that. No. I've got like, you should have killed yourself, you big pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Yeah, you got, no. What was the reaction like in the dressing room? Uh, not, not a lot. Not a lot. And I think that's maybe probably down to some of the reasons of football is that, again, a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of people don't want to touch into it. Yeah. Is there a lot of doggy dog in that game though, isn't there as well? 
I've been in a few change rooms. I think it's more like everyone's on their own individual journey. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard to just... Uh, They're worried about themselves, their own yeah, shit. Yeah, I think yeah. you're thinking everyone's going to worry about you, but it's actually like it's everyone's got their own stuff going on. Yeah. And maybe one or two people reached out. So I saw your posts. Yeah. Like real powerful. Yeah. But not everyone. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uncertainty in football, right? Loads. Is that the biggest thing? It's one of the biggest things where with my shoulder injury. Yeah. This is what Rob taught me. So Rob taught me one of the biggest things is um, six human needs. Yeah. And he talked about certainty and uncertainty. Yeah. They paradoxically work together. It's yeah. like, well, football is so uncertain. Am I going to get a new contract? Am I not going to get a new contract? Yeah. Am I going to be in the team? Am I going to be out of the team? Am I going to yeah. play well? Am I not going to play well? Yeah. Um, and then the certainty is like, well, you know, you, you need to balance it up, but it's really hard to balance it up. So when yeah. I got my injury, Rob, actually, this is the thing that coached me through it. He had the six human needs in front of us. Mm. Um, certainty, uncertainty, um, love, love and connection mm -hmm. and... Significance, growth, <laughs> and contribution. Yeah. And he said, right, rank these out of 10. Yeah. Where you are. So generally, uh, my my certainty was zero. My uncertainty was 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My love and connection was, my wife was really good. Yeah. Like amazing. Yeah. But in terms of what used to that normal, really low. Yeah. My contribution. That will be a big thing. Negative. Yeah. Um, my growth, growth will be low because you, you're not. My, my, I had I couldn't even lift a kilogram. Yeah, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so everything was down. He goes right. He goes. This is the first stage. Is that you know what you're going through now? Look how unbalanced it is. We, yeah. we, we live our whole life to balance these up, mm -hmm. whether you notice it or not. And I, I only started to really notice that recently as well because I had a lot of uncertainty going on. I've had a lot of uncertainty going on um, when I had my newborn. Yeah. Like you think, well, how's two going to be? Yeah. And what I didn't realize is I started watching Suits again on Netflix. Why? Because I love it. I know yeah. what it is. I don't know what I'm going to get. So I start. I had loads of uncertainty, and oh, I didn't realize shit, really? my, even my my what I pick on on, yeah. on telly yeah. was to balance up my human needs. Yeah. But my human needs were massively out of balance. Yeah. And this is the biggest tool that I've ever taken with me now is the fact that if I get these feelings again, it's like draw the map. This yeah. is a tool. Draw out the six human needs. Yeah. How about where are you at a 10? I yeah. do it probably every six weeks. And then look at what you can do to close the gap between where you're at and a 10. Perfect. Yeah. So I, Rob said, right, where's, where's the other, what, what do you need? And I yeah. said, I need certainty. Yeah. Great, so how are you going to get certainty? Yeah. Well, I don't know. And he goes, okay, well, you got to think. So this is what this is what the problem was, is a lot of people don't want the feeling, but they don't want to put the work in. Yes. And I get that because I was there too. Yeah. I just want the feeling to go. I want to go to sleep one day and wake up and hope it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the same yeah. way, if you've got no confidence in football, you sometimes hope you're just going to go to bed and wake up with confidence. Yeah. But that's not that's that's based on luck and talk to me about this then. Let's stay here because this is something that can be bro quite broad as well. How do you get more confidence? What's your thing to get more confidence? What's your thing to feel more? Because that's all it is really, and it? it's a feeling. How do you feel more confident? So because a football, that's a fucking big deal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I think that's that is. Oh, he's a confidence player. You get it all the time. He's a. Con I'm like, isn't everyone a confidence player? So I'm still learning about this. Yeah. So I actually, so we've set up the Inner Game Academy to help players with this stuff. Yeah. And someone actually asked me a question. They asked me, this is that question. Yeah. And I said how I got confidence. Yeah. And then I said, no, nope, no, it's all wrong. I'm completely <laughs> wrong. I, I spoke for, we've probably still got it. I don't know if you remember it. We spoke for 10 minutes on how to build confidence. Yeah. So I said, then I started to go, start to build. I went, no, that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Because I, I paradoxically worked against myself. Yeah. I said, I can't remember what I said at the time. I said, right. You can't get... Uh, do you remember what I said at the time? Do you remember, do you remember the call? I do. It was a podcast. Yeah, it was a podcast. And we spent... The podcast was only 15 minutes long. Yeah. And it was 10 minutes of me saying how to build confidence. Yeah. The next two minutes going, nah, that's a load of rubbish, that. And the funny thing is we then went into the call with the kids yeah. after. and said, guys, I got this wrong. Um, and I'm still discovering now, but on the Inner Game Academy, one of the boys asked, is like, right, imagine something happens in a game. Yeah. And... You know, you give the ball away, you give away a goal, you're at fault for a goal. Mm -hmm. How do you then not focus on that and stay confident? Mm -hmm. So I've gone, I don't really, I don't want to start answering because that means I haven't really listened to the question. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, that's a really good question. I'm not really sure, but like, ask Rob a question. Give us a second. I'll, I'll try and, I'll go back to a moment where I've made a mistake. Yeah. I'll listen to the commentary in my head and try and work it did out. Did you think of that game against Stoke where you came on at left back? And didn't you like give a penalty? No, did you give a goal away which against game? Stoke that time? Uh, which one? Obviously. Do you know where that? Do you know where that? <laughs> do you know where Alex Neal came back and then we got fucking humped off Stoke? You came on as left back, I'm sure. No, I came on in that game at, uh, two one down. And did he? He said, "Come on and get some more." Did know, he play? Le didn't he put you on left back left or something? Back. Yeah. So he came on and said, "Right, get some, get a good, get a hold of the game." We yeah. lost five one. Yeah. <laughs> 
That so, was a that was a that was a mad game of football. It was mad. Could even worse. I had a stinker. Game. I got voted man of the match today. <laughs> so I've got this bottle of champagne. Only on like fifteen minutes. You weren't on long. Twenty, 20 well, minutes. A good 20. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like maybe like events. Yeah. yeah. Take take any event in isolation. Now, how do you get over that? So like take the worst one, which any, well, anyone from the outside might look at. I scored yeah. an own goal at Watford at Vicarage Road in my return. Yeah. So I've been at a club thirteen years. Everyone thinks. Everyone talks about and bigs it up. Oh, you've been released. Yeah. Go back and show them why they shouldn't yeah. release you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Bang, yeah. own goal. Yeah. And not just an own goal where it's deflected off your knee. I'm talking, jumped up, header it, headed it the wrong way into the bottom Like corner. a proper own goal. Oh, a proper one. You, yeah. can't, you can't get any better. <laughs> like the keeper had no chance. Make it 2-1 them in front of, I think it was the Vicarage Road end. Like, yeah. you can't get worse. Yeah. So it's like, well, take that moment in isolation. What do you do then? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, so I need to go back to these moments now. And this is how I, this is how I deal with my confidence now is, the way I find my best playing state is I try to stay present to three seconds ahead. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll start, I'll, I'll remain now. So but imagine me and you are talking and right What am I going to do next? That's so I'm starting now yeah. versus three seconds. Three seconds ahead, probably like my, my zone where if you're a striker, I'm always looking at you. Okay, yeah. I'm looking at you, where's the ball, and in relation to where you are in relation to the ball and what's going to happen next. Yeah. So that's how I try to say three seconds. What's going to happen next? Okay, I'm going to position myself how I think... Like everything's information in front of you. Mm-hmm. However, everything's going to run forward. I'm going to try and get there. If, if I think the ball's going to go there, I'm going to start to work to that position yeah. to give myself yeah. max opportunity of stopping and preventing, yeah. getting the ball back and recycling. So that's why I stay in that naught to three say yeah. waste time being behind mm-hmm. because that has no impact on the now. So yeah. it's even now to two, three seconds ahead. Yeah. That's my zone. So take a, take a mistake, any mistake you want. There's a fair few to choose from. Take any mistake in isolation, however bad it is. Yeah. So this is... Uh, and we 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 watch my. Game. I'm now pulling out all these mistakes that I've seen you make. By the way, this is terrible. Yeah, what have you got? Yeah, Mate, do you mean that tackle against Swansea? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that <laughs> one as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was yellow. It was yellow. <laughs> I can't believe I'm, this is really bad. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> like, I've I've now disconnected from the emotion of it. So yeah, I can talk about things like my like like my um like my injury. I can disconnect from that now. Yeah. and talk about it like it's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to. Oh, I like. I suppose it's probably good that it's not in your head. Like getting it out is probably. So when people say to me, like, how do you deal with insecurities? I'm like, I just talk about it. Yeah. Like, if, if I go speak in an event where I know that no one knows who I am, they're going to think, he talks too fast, he's way too fucking confident, his accent's fucking stupid, and he he's just, I just own that straight away. I'm like, you're probably thinking, who's this arrogant prick on the stage? So I just cover it straight away, and then it's out. It's not. I'm not thinking about it, because I've just fucking owned it. Is that what you're kind of doing with these mistakes, just owning them and then moving on? Well, you accept, probably what you just done, yeah. in a, in a, you accept it. Yeah. So we uh, we got in a debate the other day about when an event happens. Yeah. Um, you kind of like you have a we talked about it and it's not the nicest subject. It's you, when you lose someone, you go for like four or five stages of grieving. Yeah. And I know it's not the same thing, but when you have an event in football, for example, mm. it's very similar. You go through like a denial. No, it wasn't mm. my fault. It was your fault. Mm. Ah, Paul should have been there. Paul should have covered me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go through like bargaining. Oh yeah, like he should have been there. He should have covered me, or yeah. he could have done that. Yeah. The last stage, uh, and then you go, ang- you get anger. Yeah. So if you had you brought up that to me in the moment, yeah. or me three years ago yeah. when I'm not as well coached yes. and uh, perhaps you know experienced and helped by you know my family and friends, yeah. had you brought up that own goal or a tackle, yeah. I would have gone. I might have told you to do one. Yeah, <laughs> I might have argued back. Yeah, and you, you, you'll hear people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was his fault. You should have done that. You get a little bit nitty gritty. Yeah. I was trying to do this, so yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll start pointing fingers. You get really angry. And yeah, like, oh, fuck, I can't see him pull again. Like, yes, yeah. 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 But, but then the last stage is acceptance. Yeah. So as soon as you get to an acceptance phase, at any event that happens, yeah. it's a beautiful phase yeah. because now I can go well. Yeah, that was my fault. Stop wasting energy on it. Stop wasting energy, but even yeah. more importantly, you can learn from it. Yeah. You can't learn from something if you're still angry, yeah. you haven't accepted that it's your mistake. As soon as yeah. you get to the acceptance phase, and that's what I do now with a mistake. Yeah. And I think the way I do that is, so going back to that zero to three seconds is make a mistake. So this is how a game's I'm playing in my head, and we did it with the Inner Game Academy kids the other day, Yeah. and we accidentally discovered this. Yeah. Like, we didn't plan this session and this is why I love coaching because I discover something about myself that's changed my game. So we watched my game back from uh, maybe Ipswich or Preston. And I said, right, this is how I can remember my game, all my clips. And I said, this is how I work. This is how my brain works during a game. So as the game's unfolding, I have a running commentary in my head. 
So I'm like, okay, he's moved the ball to there. Paul's now a meter in front of me. And maybe he needs to get a little bit tighter. It looks like he's going to play him behind and start to drop. Yeah. So you see, I've got that commentary. Yeah. It's a running commentary. It doesn't stop. Yeah. But it, it's commentating on what's happening right now, there, right then. Yeah. yeah and yeah, what yeah, might yeah. happen in a second. Yeah. So if I'm commentating on like, if, I, if you're talking to me right now, or I'm talking to you now, I can't think about my own goal v Watford. Yes. I can't do both. I have to stop so you're now. fully in the game. Yeah, so yeah. I can stop now if I think about Watford. But yeah. If I'm commentating on what's happening, yeah, I can't think about that. Yeah, event. yeah, yeah. So it's full. It's always you're, full. Yeah. You're intellectual. Because attention is limited. So yeah. I give my attention now to, yeah, nice. to, to that. There's no room for Watford. No room. We yeah, can't. I love that. But it, the goal happens. Mate, there was a moment on Saturday where I thought you were going to give a penalty away. You came rushing out towards someone and then you didn't make the tackle. I can't. Experience now. I that's what I thought. As soon as you said about that Swansea learning from that thing. Yeah, yeah. There was a moment on Saturday where this kid came through and you came fucking charging out and then you put, you didn't make the tackle. Yeah, well, you learned. Can you remember that or not? Uh, first half, second half. I can't. Shooting towards the fucking... Uh, not towards the home. The actually, home I'll, go through, I'll go through my clips tomorrow. Uh, there was a one where you came rushing out, and I was like, fuck, he's going to lift him here. And then you didn't Stand make the tackle. Break. I was like, that's experience. Well, probably, it was experience. Well, it's experience if you go through, the, you get to the acceptance phase. Uh, if not, you'll probably do this. A lot of people do the same things over and over again because yeah. they never think they're in the wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll happily admit I'm in the wrong. Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful thing to do. Why? Because I'm going to get better. Uh, you can't get better, right? If you, think you, you can't get no. better if you're in the anger phase. You're in the. Yeah. Um, so right, I'm gonna I'm gonna commentate on the now. So I made a mistake. Imagine I've just made a mistake, not as not as a known goal. Because you imagine I um, I give the ball away to the team and they're countering on me. Yeah. Probably the best example. So I tried to play it into midfield. Yeah. They've narrowed and won it. Yeah. I'm going now. Okay, he's running at me. Strike. I'm the other striker's running off my shot. I need to narrow. I need to narrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I need to keep dropping. I need to keep dropping. Yeah. Fullbacks coming. So I'm seeing everything now. And I'm talking through it in my head. Yeah. My right, fullbacks now. I need to narrow the center half. Get closer. Get closer. He's now getting close to the edge of the box. Edge of the box now. A cliff. I yeah. need to stop. Can't yeah. fall off the back of the cliff. I need to engage. Yeah. So with this commentary yeah. in my head, and that's exactly what I do. It's little things like that. I can't give any. I give no attention to the mistake. Do you know what I like in this too is that I, I work with a lot of people who struggle with overthinking. I mean, yeah. you're overthinking because you've got room for it. Yeah. Like you're overthinking fucking posting a video on social media because you give yourself too much time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, overthinkers have too much space in their life. So they create these scenarios that don't fucking exist. Oh, you keep attaching. Or some I or something from the past that I'm like, that's gone. You, I don't have room for it. So you, yeah. you're creating this scenario in your head where there's no room for thinking about mistakes. Yeah, because I've given my attention right now. You're past the, it, I. So I'm like, right, I'm commentating on now. Yeah. And then... And then something where I gave away a pass against Preston, and I com uh, was it Preston? I think it was Preston. Yeah. So I gave the ball, went to give it to Dan Neil, mm -hmm. and then that split a second, I was like, terrible pass. Mm -hmm. But they're countering on me now, so I'm going, I need to narrow, I need to narrow. Yeah. Uh, what's their player's name? Their striker. I know I've played against him. Will Keane. Oh, Will, Will Keane. Keane Will Keane's now running through the middle. I need to narrow. Got to go with his ass, then. Yeah. Okay. He, he's now he, he's now running through. I need to narrow. I need to drop. I need to drop. Yeah. And as the ball's getting played, it's going into his feet. If I'm thinking about my mistake, I'm telling yeah. you now, I wipe him out. I yeah. take the yellow and I go like that. But oh, I was thinking that shit. clearly okay. and I was that yeah, present. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah. The, as it came into him, I was like, there's no way he can receive this and score. Yeah. It's going to run through to the goalie. Yeah. So I then let it run through to the goalie. So you're going to wipe him out of that old frustration from your bad pass? No, uh, maybe so not if you're thinking about the bad pass, you're going to... I'm gonna... thinking about the bad pass. I'm not thinking clearly. Yeah. I'm seeing, like, there's so much detail in his body language yeah. of... He's running too far. Like, it's really hard to... Is that why you see a player sometimes, they get their... The maid gets wiped out. They don't get a free kick, so they go and wipe out the player. Because they're, yeah. they're thinking about they're, that. Yeah, like there's so much detail in, for example, someone running at you. Yeah, like so much the yeah. speed, the direction, the weight of pass. Mm -hmm. That if you're fully absorbed in that, you can calculate when he's going to yes. get the ball, how far he's going to go. Yes. But if there's an element of you're thinking about a mistake again, attention's a limited thing. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. digest all that information. Yeah. Your next decision can't be the best possible one because yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. got all the information in front of you. Yeah, yeah, it's like it. going to court without all the information. You're going to be an idiot. You yeah. spend time getting all the information. How do yeah, you do yeah, that? Yeah. Focus on what you can. Yeah. So at the last second, I said, right, he's not going to get there. Yeah. But I was thinking, so at the time, I was like, I'm really glad I gave that pathway because I've just learned <laughs> I, I, everything I've coached. Yeah. I did it perfectly. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. the technical side of giving the pass away, yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Like rubbish. Yeah. But I can work on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the emotion to disconnect from that. And that's yeah. how I keep my confidence high yeah. is because I'm now commentating on something. Yeah, that's solid. I, I, I just got to get a rubbish pass. No problem. Yeah. Like I still got to make the, the, the idea was right. Mm -hmm. I might judge myself now of intentions. Mm -hmm. but I'm back to being present. Um, so that's how, how do I build confidence? I try and stay in the now. Mm -hmm. 
and I want to make mistakes because I'm going to learn so much. Yeah, I'm going to learn so. Much. Let's talk about then something that this is the one of the things that I'm that I always love to love people's opinion on is, and this is hugely linked to confidence as well. Like, how do you deal with criticism? Because it's a massive thing. I saw something last night. I was reading about Aaron Ramsdale when he first signed for Arsenal. He said he was seeing his heroes on TV talking about how shit he was. Like, he's heroes from when he's... And then all of the comments... Obviously, I like to read the comments. They were like, well, you're a footballer. You get paid enough fucking put up with the criticism and stop acting like a baby. Like, what's your thing around criticism? Like, because you're at a big club, mate. Yeah. And I, there's a lot of criticism. Like, even when you're playing well. We were talking about that before. I'm like, you're playing well and people are still chatting shit. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck's up? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, listen, I think we're... I think we... Again, we do it. We all criticise. Yeah. Like... Someone say I don't. We all we all could do better on that front. Yeah. And I'm always first to look in the mirror. Yeah. Um. When people criticize me, I don't. I, I don't mind it at all. Yeah. I don't like empty criticism. If you can back it with facts and figures, where I can learn from. Yes. It, fill your boots. Yeah. Okay. You're 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 you're, you're crap. Yeah. Great. Why? Yeah. Tell me why, because I'll get better. Yeah. And I'll make sure that that. And then if I'm crap at something else, you tell me, and I'll get better at that. So yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of you might be right. It's a source of. Well, it could be right. Yeah. It's yeah. a source of feedback. Hmm. Because if someone say like, listen, you don't get me wrong, you can't go for feedback for everybody. Mm. So I tend to stay in my inner circle of, you know, Rob's in my inner circle where mm. I go to Rob for stuff. My wife's, the, you know, the nucleus of it. Yeah. Where she'll pick up on stuff for me. And when she gives me stuff, I'm, I'm listening. Shall you need to work on your left foot on that? My left foot, my right, yeah. <laughs> I know. She's, I don't go for her for football coaching. <laughs> I, f I finished the game once and I scored and I got mad at the match and I come home she, she goes, didn't give a fuck she goes I don't know if you play well or good I'm just proud of you <laughs> I'm standing there like that going cool tell us, tell us well done and I'm like ah oh, don't worry about it yeah, yeah. I look over to them in the game and my little girl's just uh, my little girl's looking up at the seagulls my little my wife's just looking yeah. at the seagulls eating chips I'm yeah. like, did you not just see that like, yeah. did you not see that I was like, uh, that like, keeps I you humble as well though I, I think ice magic like, yeah. I don't like I play Best story, side story. I scored a known goal. Oh, you're gonna go which one? Uh, <laughs> I, I've scored. I scored a known goal in uh, COVID. Yeah. Another header. Yeah. And uh, this is the, one of the things that changed me. And it's a tool that I use. I use my kids um, mm -hmm. as a tool to help me um, remain present and change yeah. how we feel. Like if you don't like how you feel, yeah, change it. Yeah. You you're in control of how you feel. How yeah. do you change how you feel? You change what you focus on. Yeah. Um. That's how like you change how you change what you focus on. You change how you feel, yep. you change how you feel, you change how you act. One of the yep. best models that Rob taught me again. Yep. One of the best ones. I, I mean, I think I taught him that, but... Actually, <laughs> <laughs> one of the best ones that Paul told me. Hey, Rob said it's like, <laughs> he claims everything's here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, the best... I mean, tool, I stole it off someone else, so... Yeah, I, I, listen, every, every, every bit of it is. It is. It is. Cycle, just it is. It. So, uh, again, like I, I learned that big game. mid-game is like, if you don't like how you feel, yeah. I always used to think when I first joined here that... Yeah. That is how you feel you're done. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember playing when I first joined Sunderland. I got off to a bad start. And I thought that was me for the rest of the game. For the rest, until I managed to either do something or maybe luck might. I wanted to talk about this, but go on, we're talking about criticism, weren't we? Yeah. And and I wanted, we, we got off and I wanted you, to uh, ask you, I wanted to ask you. So you deal with criticism by being open to it. You're obviously avoiding a bit of social media, right? You're not. Uh, yeah, so like, again change what you focus on if you don't want to yeah there's there's two ways to look at it i know and i've done this before so i'm not i've done it before where people will go on social media when you play well because yes. you need a pat on the back yeah yeah, yeah if yeah. you're willing to go on it when you play well you've got willing to go on it when you go bad and mm. taking both is the same mm. so it's this is I don't, I'm, I'm gonna not give advice to people i'm gonna give advice to myself yeah because I, I feel it's you shouldn't always give advice to people yeah. people can take what they want to board yeah if i'm willing to go on it when it's good i've got to yeah. be willing to go on when it's bad yeah so no problem. So yeah. I, I I can I go through phases where I can happily see I can happily go on it. Yeah. I some I go on it to check how my teammates have gone. Yeah. But social media and they've got notifications where even if you get abused, you don't want to see it, you'll go on to it. Yeah, once yeah, you're yeah. on it, yeah. you can't help but see it. So there's two ways. If you're gonna see it, see it both ways. Yeah. Don't just see when it's good yeah. and see when it's bad. Like take it, take yeah. it on the chin and just get on with it. Yeah. Or don't or just don't go on it at all. Yeah. There's there's it's, it's easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then equally it's like, well, you know, I, I turn around, I, I said to someone the other day on our In A Game Academy call with the kids, I said, if I start saying loads of abuse and Italian at you right now, yeah. what would you do? Yeah. He goes, I laugh. Yeah. Oh, well, why would you laugh? And he goes, well, I have no idea what you're what saying. You're saying. Yeah. I was like, oh, why do you have no idea? Well, I don't know the meaning of what you're saying. Yeah. 
So I said, oh, when someone starts abusing you, you're giving it meaning. Mm. You're giving it meaning by accepting it and mm-hmm. thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So I said, just think of it even in Italian or like give it another meaning. Yeah. Like you can label it as anything you want, but give it meaning or just make peace with the fact that if they're not in your circle, dismiss yeah. it. Yeah. If they come up to you, ask for more feedback because mm-hmm. everything's a source of feedback. I got released from Watford. Mm-hmm. Give us the reasons why because I'll go work on that. Yeah. I'm not angry. Just tell us why. Let's, let's stay there then because I want to ask you this as well. You get released by Watford. What's that like? So Watford, the team you supported or not? Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> so I haven't, I've actually disconnected a little bit from football as a fan as I got older and the more I've been in it. I don't I think know that happens a lot. I think that happens a lot, doesn't it? Does it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it does. Huh? Um, I've followed Rob's career, Brad Friedel, you know, at Blackburn. <laughs> no, he looks exactly like Brad Friedel. <laughs> he does tonight. a little bit, aye. Yeah, he is him. Aye. Does it look like a bit like Brad? I think he looks like that, um, what's that porn star called? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The ball guy. I mean, no, no, no. Ball guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Porno bots, that. No, not the rock. Not the rock. No, the cock. The cock. So you get released by Watford. Uh, again, it's different. Because that can make or break some people, right? Yeah, again, as a kid, you're really young and naive to the world. Yeah. So again, it will affect you differently depending on what time you are in your career. Yeah. I think had, it, had I got released at school, it might affect me a little bit more because... At school, you don't realise this, but your identity gets forced upon you. So you're in a discovery age as a kid. You're the footballer. Like, yeah, you, like yeah. your boy, he's in his teens now. He's 12. Yeah, so he's going to He looks the same age as Riggy, I thought. <laughs> I was like, how the fuck can he look? He's 16, he's 12? Yeah. It's mental. Yeah. So he's going to go, uh, like my kids will, you're in, that, I think that age, everyone will find it different. You're in that discovery period. Okay, yeah. what am I? Who am I? What do yeah. I stand for? All of that. Yeah. And... Being in football, that gets forced upon you a little bit. I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love what I do. Yeah. But it gets forced upon you. Yeah. Because I was known as the kid, the the, the what the kid in the academy. Yeah. People said, oh, it's the kid in the academy." That's yeah. uh, And there wasn't many people in the academy when I was going through school. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's the, the Watford kid. Yeah. So, again, I was known as the Watford kid. So how yeah. I get, re- I had that for years. Yeah. And wrongly or rightly, I people would res- give you a bit more respect yeah. and like you because yeah, you played football. Yeah. And I didn't understand that too much as a kid, but that identity was getting forced upon yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Known as the footballer. So, okay, well, what else do I identify as of, as that age? Not more really than just a footballer, because that's what people said I was. Yeah. I was a bit young. Yeah. Had I got released then, I see. I think that's a big problem for for a lot of players. Yeah. Is if you identify yourself as a footballer, whether yeah. that's you or self-imposed or yeah. imposed by others, and then you get released and that stops. And you stop being because yeah. that's a big part of you just gone. Yeah. And I had that. Like you get that little, and I'll still have that now a little bit. But I'm yeah. working on that side. There's, I'm, I'm a dad. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a friend. I'm a, I'm yeah. a lot more than just. I have in a game academy. I'm a coach. Yeah. I'm more than just foot. So football stops. Yeah, yeah. My whole being doesn't just stop. Yeah, I, yeah, I've yeah. got other energies that I can give yeah. to. So I think that would have affected me more as a kid because. The Watford then goes, and how do then people identify them? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I would have found that hard, but I went through the academy without getting released. And when yeah. I did get released, I wasn't at school. Yeah. So how did I deal with it? My dad's a full time legend. Yeah. Uh, like the the way he. I hope was, my son says that about me when he's your age. He didn't a minute ago when I asked <laughs> him. <laughs> my dad and my mum, like, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be anywhere without yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, everything goes to them. Um, but like some of the lessons they taught me without me knowing it and it comes out now like having a kid I realised how great my mum and dad are I know yeah, how yeah, yeah, yeah. having kids you start you know even more yeah yeah of course you do I so uh, my dad ha- always had a saying so if I play well on a Saturday as a kid scored a goal scored a hat trick scored five mm-hmm. whatever or played badly mm-hmm. he'd greet me the same with the same energy because yeah. he'll treat playing well and playing bad the same Yeah, make me try and pick apart the learnings always, yeah. good or bad. Yeah. And it always end however high or however low I was, he'd always ask me the same question. And the same question was, Luke, what are you doing tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And my answer was, I'm training, Dad. So regardless of what the event happened, yeah. it's what you're doing tomorrow, Luke. And it was like a it's a reset. Without no I didn't know yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. It's a reset. Yeah. What are you doing tomorrow, Luke? I'm training. Yeah. And it was a way of grounding yourself and yeah. realizing what you're doing. So anyway, the way I got released was not the ideal way of what people thought. I was at a club 13 years. You'd like to think they'd bring you in for a meeting, they'd sit you down and, yeah, 
you know, maybe say thank you for your services so where you can go, we're going to help you now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but I actually got misled that I was going to get a contract. And they said, listen, keep coming in. So I kept coming in with the first team. First team stopped. They're like, keep coming in with the under 21s. So I kept coming in with the under 21s. Yeah. The under 16. I'm coming over. No one no one was coming in anymore. So I was like, I'll keep coming in if you want me to. Like, no, oh, go, go home and ring you. So I was like, yeah, no problem. So I went home and uh, I was actually watching Hollyoaks at the time. One of my friends got me into it. And oh, shit. It was terrible. So I was watching it. My dad came home. Yeah. All right, Luke. How about my dad? Carried on watching it. He goes, I've got something to tell you. So yeah. He went, uh, You've been released by the Watford Academy. I've gone, paused. I've gone, Huh? Really? Yeah. And I went, Ah. All right. Thanks, Dad. How did he know? <laughs> uh, so I didn't really have an agent at the time. Yeah. So apparently they f- uh, the club phoned an agent that phoned my dad, and my dad came home and told me. What? Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, so don't have expectations of like having a meeting, because that will kill you. Expectations. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then that happens. So obviously then you've got to digest and process it. And As a bit of what are you going to do next? Yeah, it's a huge of what you're going to do next, because obviously the season's finished. I didn't yeah. have the luxury of going on trial at a club. Yeah. So, like, I think my dad was obviously um, found it hard as well because obviously I've always, he's like, he's like what's next for you? Because as a dad, he doesn't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember we were just talking about it and my dad just asked the question, he's like, what are you doing tomorrow, Luke? Yeah. And I looked at him a bit, not the same energy, and I went, training dad? Yeah. Went, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, regardless of score happy on the weekend, and he did this from a young, it's like, yeah. what are you doing tomorrow? Because it doesn't matter how good you are yeah, yeah, yeah. or how bad you are yeah. or anything in between. It's what are you doing tomorrow, right? Yeah. And it's the same with me. Like, play well on the weekend and we win. What am training. I doing tomorrow? I'm, I'm training. I'm trying to, trying to, if I have a stinker. It's interesting because there's, there's an MMA coach, I'm sure, who I read, he said, coming in and training like the weekend after you've had a loss is actually easy. Yeah. Because you're trying to avenge a loss. He said, you'll know who's going to be a winner by who turns up the week after they've won and fight. Yeah. And I found that very interesting. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Because obviously when you're angry and you're pissed off that you've lost, you want to put it right. Yeah. He said, but actually the guy that comes in and trains the week after they've won a big fight, they're the ones that will go the fucking furthest, which is which I found very interesting. Yeah. Was there any, any, ever any thought of you not of doing something else? No. Really? No. Um, There's no plan B? No. And you can look at that as guys that naive as that. Uh, I, I had I've read that about Ashley Young Ashley you know Ashley Young yeah, yeah. still fucking going mad <laughs> he said something like there was never a plan B ever and he said and that helped me so much because I think he got released a couple of times when he was because he was at Wofford wasn't he I'm sure yeah listen I can I'm a dad now so I'd the way I the way I see it back then is different to now I'd yeah. turn around to my kid and they had a job for example I'd yeah. be like always have an eye on something else yeah, 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 don't, yeah, yeah. don't quit a job or leave a job without having something yeah, yeah, yeah. and like now I enjoy my coaching yeah. you knowing if football stop tomorrow I've had a wonderful yeah, 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 time yeah. Yeah. but I'm just as passionate about that so yeah. I'm not going to say listen having a, just having a plan A is yeah. is the formula yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not going to say that yeah. but at the time but you didn't was, end at the time I was young like I invested a lot into it Yeah. my next decision was I, I read something really good the other day um, someone, you probably, you definitely would have heard this. The one in the forest, the guy was like, I'm, I'm a bit lost. I think he said it was really cloudy or really dark and cold. And it's like, I can't see where to go. And it's like, yeah. can you see your next step? Yeah. Just take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the perfect example. Yes. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of time, life can hit with overwhelm. Yeah. Or maybe a lack of choices. And it's yeah. like, what do you do now? What's the next step? Yeah, and yeah. Me, my, my dad's, you know, can you see your next step is what you're doing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So our plan is, right, we can't see as far as a month away. Yeah. So don't be a month away. Yeah, I, yeah, if, you yeah. atta- if I attach to a month away right now, it's going to bring me uncertainty. So just best next bring step, me. best next step so all the time. I'm not saying yeah. don't ever look too far ahead. Yeah. That's good. But if you can't see that far, for whatever circumstances yeah. it is, then don't look at... But also sometimes that can seem too big or too far away so you don't do anything. Big, yeah. 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 The overwhelm of it, oh, that's daunting and you, yeah. don't, you don't do it at all. And I've yeah. been there. Yeah. It's okay. Well, what plan... Okay. Have the end goal reverse engineer back from that. So what's yeah. my end goal? I need to get to a club. Yeah. If I reverse engineer back from that, what do I need to do? Well, probably, and we this is what my, my dad and I talked about is I need to come back from f- uh, to preseason ready, and ready means the fittest, the strongest, the fastest. Mm-hmm. It's not I'm looking at preseason to build fitness. Yeah. It's I am running from the get go. Yeah, we didn't know where that. What well, we had no idea. We were yeah, out of yeah, control yeah. of that. So yeah. we had a whole of the off season, had no idea where we were going. Yeah, but we went on a holiday, like family holiday, yeah. and my sister and I. My sister used to play um, like uh, junior England hockey. Yeah, we trained together. We'd be yeah. on the beach. We'd had all, all sorts just yeah, training, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. it's great looking back at them videos now. Yeah, we had no idea. So we said, right, we're going to train. We're going to train, train, train. And I had yeah. a friend who was great with me, 
Um, and I trained with him in the off season. Yeah. Uh, a friend called Ben. He's got his own academy, and yeah. he was amazing for me. Like yeah. the way he coached me, we trained every day. Yeah. Even when he had family days, we get up at six and we yeah. train. Yeah. Because the end goal was day one preseason. No yeah. idea where. Yeah. And then an opening came where I was alone at Willstone the season before, and they yeah. knew the Wicker manager. Yeah. And the Wicker manager said, "Yeah, yeah, just come in on trial, no yeah. problem." Yeah. So my, I knew now. I had now I could attach a goal to it. Yeah. So my running now changed. It was like Wickham. I had a date. It was the twenty eighth, I think. Yeah. Twenty eighth, Wickham. You got some urgency. Yeah. Now yeah. I've got like a bit more direction, so yeah. I can plan a little bit more. I was like, yeah. right, I need to be fit and ready to go on the twenty eighth. So I got to the twenty sixth, and uh, this again, this one, my dad's legend. You'll see why. Twenty sixth, my dad goes on social media. Wickham reported back on the uh, Thursday as a team, and they do this every year. I don't know if they saw it now. The team will report back Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. They then have Saturday, Sunday off. And then come Monday, they do all the fitness tests. And yes. try list will come in with yes. them. But they have like, a, everyone that's signed comes in two days before. Yeah. So my dad saw they went back on the Thursday. So he goes, Luke, Wickham are back in. Yeah. So I said, yeah, nice. He goes, well, you're ready, yeah? I yeah. said, oh, I've been ready. I'm, I've trained. I'm yeah, ready. I'm chomping. And he goes, well, why don't you phone the manager and ask if you can come in tomorrow? Yeah. I said, ah, oh, I don't know. He goes, well, do you want this? I went, yeah. He goes, well, we'll do it then. You got, if you want something, you got to do something different yeah. you got to get in there early so i phoned the assistant i said listen can i come in tomorrow please and he go, I, I, i'm ready I, i'm i've trained yeah and uh, he goes i'll call you back call me back five minutes later and he said um gaffer loves it see you tomorrow <laughs> so i was like no problem yeah so anyway i got in my car um put it in my sat nav to get to the training round. yeah anyway i took the wrong turn in and i was one of them days i didn't have a lot of money oh, and my shit. sat nav had no data oh, shit. so then i had to like I pulled over, bought some data for two ninety nine. Yeah. Reloaded my maps and got there on time. Yeah. And uh, day one's yo yo test, so like bleep test. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing, bleep test, yo yo test, like yeah. That was my first moment. Yeah. Anyway, so due to the beeps, everyone in the team's there. Yeah. And everyone's dropped out. And it just keeps beeping. I keep running. The gaffers going, "Go on, son, keep going." Keep no, going. really. So like I did, I had when I got released, I had no idea what my plan and yeah. journey was. Yeah. But I, I couldn't see that far ahead. So I was like, "What's my next step?" Yeah. That's fine sometimes. It's like, right, if it's life throws a lot of stuff at you, yeah, yeah. Just try and find your next step. It's yeah. not always easy. Just scrap, find that next step. Don't yeah, know what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Take two steps and then we can give you a chance and you can see three or four steps ahead. Yeah. So yeah, the yo-yo test, then we did sprint tests and I was I was fit. Yeah. I was and ready. are you doing that all the time now as well? Are no. you like, I like the rest of your career, are you still trying to go in as fit as you can before? No. Do you not? No, no. I oh, love to shit. say that. I love to say yes and sound like a legend. That I'm coming. No, he's fucking com He's got comfortable. This motherfucker. No, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really want to say yeah. Just, no one would know. So of course shit, I, I do. Of course I come oh, back yeah, fitter yeah, than everybody yeah. else. Uh, no, it's like, like I'm not the same person. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the same person I was back then. Like events change. Yeah. Um, listen, if I get released. <laughs> Don't get wrong. If I get released, I'm going to South Shields Beach. Club, I'm yeah, you're on South Shields Beach. Then, so, yeah, you'll see me on them sand dunes and swimming lengths in the sea and getting out, swimming out to boats. Yeah. Um, no. So at that, um, so yeah. So they said um, the the manager said he went back and said I wanted to sign you after day one. Yeah. They signed me day two or day three. So you must believe then, Luke, that there's a lot to be said for attitude, right? Yeah. There's a lot to be said for attitude. Yeah, like because that's all that is really. It's fucking attitude. Yeah, I it is. I got nothing but my mum and dad. Like the way they, they didn't never um, tell me what to do. They yeah. gave me the opportunity. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they put the scenarios in they front. They opened of me. up the space for you. Yeah, yeah, and go, go find your way. Yeah. And if I didn't find my way, they'd be like, Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure I've heard you talk about this. I, I can't remember it. I never listened to it, but I'm sure you had a debate with Lee Trundle. Yeah, uh, about nature v nurture. Yes. Yes. Talk to us about that. Oh, it's a wonderful. Is there any such thing as natural talent? That's what it is. I'm asking you the question. Oh, is there any the such thing as natural talent? Maybe a little bit. What do you mean? Maybe a little bit. Maybe I'm passed on genes, or I'm passed on. Yeah. So we, yeah, this this is the debate we always have. Yeah. And uh, I love it. I have it with so many people. Yeah. We say right. Is there? Is, are you born with natural talent, or um, is it nurtured? Yeah. And uh, that's what we've had with Lee Trundle. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of nurture. Yeah. Um, and listen, you're born with a certain amount of genetics and yeah. fast twitch muscle fibers, but you're yeah. you're born with a threshold and you can always max out. Yeah. You can max your threshold. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, your threshold might be here and mine, uh, no, yours could be here, mine could be there. Yeah. But you, we both start here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. might only get to there. I might yeah. max it out. Yeah. And 
you, you're, and do you think the difference in that then is so I think that's down, to, that's down to gen, like genetics yes. plays a part of your threshold yeah, yeah, once yeah, you've yeah. got that yeah i think it's all then down to your application you need luck yeah and listen i hate saying leaving things down to luck but like I accumulated. I'm a big fan of the hours. How much hours you put into something? Well, the fact that you didn't get that, the it, and even that wasn't a big injury that you had. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to be a little bit of luck there. Yeah, but even luck with the fact that I'm a big fan of how many hours you put in, you get out. Yes. But I accumulated thousands of hours of practice through playing with my brother and sister. Yeah. But never a brother and sister. I might not accumulate the hours of practice. I might not be where I am today. Yes. That's what it turns in terms of luck environment. Yeah. You were younger, one or not? Yeah. You're the youngest. Tell. Well, I think I just think that all the time with my kids. My daughter's strong as fuck, yeah. but it's because she's been beaten up so many times. Of it. So when she goes to jujitsu, she's blitzing people. Yeah. But it's because she's got that younger, the younger sibling strength of getting you, ragged around the house. Well, it's probably because you expect to try and be like your oldest, Aye. and you try and be like them, and Aye. they're two years ahead, and Aye. you actually try to get there. Well, even if she's get if someone gives her a bit of lip, she fucking crushes them yeah. because she's used to him t- taking the piss out of her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so yeah. our banter's really fucking good banter. Nice. Because she's, she's used to handling it. Yeah, so at yeah. school, she's got no fucking problem if anyone says anything to her. Oh. So you probably had a bit of that as well, eh? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I had good um, mentors, you can say. And yeah. Like my brother and my sister, my mum yeah. and dad. Met some cool people along the way to help me on my journey. Yeah. Talk to me about, um, I was going to start with this, getting the Shepard's hook at halftime on your debut. Oh. Yeah, talk to me about this. Yeah. Because that's hard. That's not. Oh, I couldn't get any worse at the time. You're a club I? that's how many times bigger than Wickham? Like, what's the average attendance at Wickham? Uh, we never. I don't think we had more than uh, max. We had was about nine, nine to eleven, I think. Yeah, and then you've gone in front we of thirty odd, thirty odd thousand in there. Yeah. Was it championship then, or was it League One? So uh, two relegations in a row for Sunderland. Yeah. Toxic as fuck. Everyone was angry. Like, yeah, I'm oh, very I, angry. I, I just, I just, I just Mate, I was saying, I talked to Marcus Harness after yeah. that Ipswich game, and he was like, it's so different now compared to when he went there yeah. in League One when it was toxic as fuck. He said it's like a completely different club, yeah. which is quite amazing, really. So half-time, debut, hooked at half-time. So I couldn't speak about this for months. Yeah. Um, I really couldn't. I can now. I can talk about it. Like, and I, listen, I, The way I see it now is... I try to talk about it as many people as I can. Yeah. When players join. Probably one of the best things that could have happened, right? therapy as well. Yeah. No, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. As well as the in- So the when, you, when when I said earlier, what's the best thing that's ever happened? The injury. Yeah. And this, in terms of football and taking yeah. out the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, then these two scenarios in isolation. Yeah. Some of the best things that ever happened to me. Why Which do you really think that went so badly, first of all? Nerves? Um, Trying too hard? No. Actually, not many people. So the way I thought about it a lot. Yeah. Um. I even actually talked to um, a therapist about it the other day, and she was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, like really amazing. Yeah. We just had like a, we just talked, and I was I just talked about it. Yeah. But I dismissed it as I talked about it because oh, I want to talk about it a bit more. Yeah. And fascinating what she brought out. Yeah. And the, the way that I learned it is, I still had a little bit of um, untouched anger in there, which I didn't know, and she helped me release it a little mm-hmm. bit. Um. I actually haven't told you about this. Um. I'm all up for. I'm, I'm. I love therapy. I think yeah. I'd have someone follow me every day. <laughs> I think it's amazing. And I, I like. Does me, someone listen to you? Me, uh, no one listens to me. I just keep talking. Yeah. So even my wife <laughs> tunes out. Um, but like, I think I'd have a therapist follow me every day and just tap into me because what they tap into you, I think. Yeah. Like, me four or five years ago, I, I see it as a sign of weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know the All Blacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone that doesn't see the club therapist, they deem as weak. Oh really? But, yeah, they they've come out and said too Dan, weak to Dan, talk about it. Dan Carter said, if you're not going to see the club therapist, yeah. They've rechanged the whole culture. You've That's fucking insane. Why would you not want to tap into yourself and improve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that. I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah. You're like, hiding. You're yeah. hiding, in you? Yeah. Why would you not want that self improvement? Yeah. Um, or someone to help you uncover some stuff. I, yeah. I find it like fascinating. Yeah. And I actually talked. She, I talked about it with her. And what I didn't realize is I didn't know it was there. She actually had some untapped anger in there, and we talked about that that moment. Mm-hmm. And the anger was is I felt like I got uh, put out in the debut with my hands a bit tied together. And the reason I say that is is at Wickham, we were man for man everywhere. So my job was easy. Yeah. What I found it really easy is if I was against you, wherever you, you go, you and, you wherever and, you go, I go. Yeah. No problem. It's just me against you. Me, but you yeah, didn't yeah. know I was against you. Yeah. Because no one goes man for man. Yeah. So my my whole league debut and my references was off another man. Yeah. Sounds a bit weird if you take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> we're all about the weird Don't you dare play. We're all about the weird. <laughs> so imagine we're playing a game. No, no. There's a first clip right there. 
so imagine, so imagine we go out for a game of football and yeah. we're man for man. Yeah. But no, no, no team ever does that. So I'm man for man against you. Yeah. So anywhere on the pitch now, wherever the ball is, my reference is you. So you're, yeah. you're where you are, and the balls there are going to be slightly that side of you. Yes. So I was class at winning second yes. balls because I knew, I knew how to position myself. Yeah. To if his touch ball. is a bit heavy, you, I just yeah. knew where to push my, and then breaking off you is easy because yeah. I was yeah. always next to you. I could break off you. You wouldn't really get the ball because I was so tight. Yeah. So I was man for man. Ever. My reference in a game was man for man. Yeah. So when I joined Sunderland, my whole league league education was based off man for man. Yeah. So then when I joined Sunderland, I went back into midfield. Yeah. Sunderland don't do man for man because they're a ball playing team. We weren't really a ball playing team. When yeah. you're a ball playing team, you have to find space. Yeah. So when I went onto the pitch, I'm like, right, he's my man. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? You're not, you're not, we're not man for man here. Yeah. And then I was starting to fight, well, where's my position? And then I start receiving the ball close to people yeah. instead of in space. Yeah. And I lost it a couple of times. Yeah. I could hear the groans and I was like, whoa, what's, what's, so then overwhelm hit me. I started to focus on. And that's a lot of groans, isn't it? A lot well. of groans. Yeah. A lot of anger from previous season, which, yes. listen, bring that on. Like, yes. I now bring, I've joined this club. I'm bringing on that responsibility. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. The groans are entitled, yeah. and I've got to bring that. And, that's and that like, wasn't even a. That was probably a three quarters full stadium then as well. I was yeah, there, but I heard two or three groans, but I wasn't used to that. Yeah, and I wasn't used to receiving the ball. I, I had to. I suppose Wigan, everyone's punching above that weight there, aren't they? Uh, I, or, or the, the what? When you were there, were you? Le- were the le- had you just got promoted league, league too? To I, so you are kind of exceeding expectations a little bit there, right? Like the club was br- like brilliant. Yeah, me. I loved every like some of the players were top. Yeah. But it was just a different style of play. Yeah. So not only did I come up to League One a new level, yeah. I've moved home. Um, my wife found it really hard being away from home. Yeah. Um, new team, new, new, new everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I think I was trying to grasp my position. Yeah. While folk like now we talk about attention limited. If I'm yeah. trying to focus on my position, mm-hmm. which now becomes a bit more instinctive, mm-hmm. if I'm focused on my position. I can't focus on, like, if I'm focused on you, I can't see Rob in the corner. No. Yeah. So now I'm focused on you, which is the position. I yeah. can't focus on the man now yes. coming into me. Yes. Because I'm so focused. Oh, I'm thinking about my position in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not used to this. So yes. I'm thinking about that. Now I haven't really checked my shoulders. Oh, so you're having to think about it, whereas so before I'm, you didn't have to think about it because yeah. it became so now automatic. I'm, fo- I'm focused on things that I, sh- I never had to focus on. Yeah. So now my attention is now, like, like what I've learned now going yeah. forward is now attention is a limited source. Yeah. I'm now focused on the wrong things. Yeah. Two, three times, lost the ball, groans happen. And now now as a, as a human being, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I have now got I haven't got the skill set to play in front of thirty five thousand people yeah. because um, I haven't learned it yet. Yeah. So what have I got to grasp from? I, I haven't really. Yeah. So then the manager at half time went, "Listen, we're taking you off. It's a tactical change." Yeah. I went, "Thanks for softening the blow. It's not a tactical change. I'm playing crap." <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he went, "It's a tactical change," and I, and I sat there. And to be honest with you, it like ruined me. Yeah. For like th- three, four months, I yeah. was. And were you out of the team for a bit as well? Uh, about three months, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I doubted everything about me. Yeah. Shit. Um. So yeah, from that moment, I, I, f- I felt like a huge failure. Um, I doubted everything about myself from that moment on. Yeah. Confidence went yeah. bit by bit. Yeah. Um, How do you get back? Uh, How do you get back on that fucking? Was there anything that happened? Or was there anything that you did? Was there anyone that said anything? Or so it got to the point where I worked. H- my default is work hard. Yeah. So I started getting in at eight o'clock. Yeah. Swimming, lifting yeah. more weights. I was. I was so. This is how hard I worked. When I finally turned it around, I'll, get, I'll fill in the middle bit. Yeah. If you actually watch my first goal back against Shrewsbury, yeah. I trained that hard because I didn't think I was going to play it. I trained so hard to get it all right. Man, yeah. I was so tired. Yeah. If you watch my first touch against Shrewsbury, it's the heaviest touch you'll ever see. Is it? My second touch is a tackle. <laughs> he then plays the ball in behind for me. Yeah. I go to shoot into the bottom left and I drill it into the bottom right. Oh, shit. I then go to celebrate. I nearly fall over because I'm that tired. Fucking hell. Training, like, I, I got a key copied. Uh, for the for the indoor Astro, so I could go in there twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knows. Now, now everyone knows. Yeah. So I'd just go in there for hours. The goalie coach um, uh, used to come in with me. Yeah. And it just me and him. Yeah. But I trained way too hard on that Friday. And if you actually watch the events back, it's yeah. hilarious. Because you didn't think you were going to play. I was, I was miles off it. Yeah. Um, I just didn't think. And then I came on. First mm. touch horrendous. Mm. Second touch was a tackle. Third mm. touch tried drilling on the bottom left. Went into the bottom right. And in my celebration, I just. Like, it's like a desperate se- uh, celebration. Really? I nearly stumbled, but my legs were drained. Really? But like, then everything started to come together a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I was at a stage, I was getting in so early, and I felt like a huge outsider. Yeah. I'd go hide. Whenever it started coming, I'd go hide. I'd go to the toilet. To really? The for a little bit, because I just didn't want to... When you go through something like that, you don't want to see people. I got taken off. I felt embarrassed. Yeah. And then, like, now I look back on it, like, I, this is why I love 
the north. Yeah. I love the club, and this is why I want to stay here for as long as long as I can. Yeah. Because the, the, the things the club's taught me, in the way it's um, my family, take that aside, like what it's done for my family, the family life it's given me yeah. is like something I would always be grateful. But as well as the way it's developed me as a as a player, yeah. what it's given to me in terms of feeling, like I never take that for granted. Yeah, I know any person in the stadium will give their left, right, and arm. To be doing to be what I'm doing. Yeah. So I make sure I leave everything out there. Yeah. But also the journey I've been on from from that moment, like I say, without that getting dragged at half time, I don't have a Sunderland career. Really? But like that was the, that's the, my driving force. Was that a big was that like a wake up call then? Uh y- yeah, a little bit. It was the dri- it's the driving force of where I am today. Yeah. I look back at that with immense pride. Not nowhere. I used to look back at moments like that and try and ignore it. Yeah. I look back at that as immense pride. Not it's exactly um, what you needed. Yeah, it's what you needed, isn't it? Oh, it's perfect. Because yeah. it taught me what I needed to learn. Yeah. And going into it now is my skill set was always there. And I spent three months working on a skill set. I didn't become a bad player overnight. Mm. I became a bad thinker overnight. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah, is yeah. where I listened to So it wasn't of, your skill set. Wasn't my skill but that's what I thought it was. So a lot yeah. of players <clears> think, or um my shooting's really off. Yeah. Or that I better do set, more of it. Everyone can shoot. Yeah. Like you can shoot at goal. Yeah. The difference is the mindset to replicate that. Yeah. The, the going to always going to the site. Like the well, the courage to take the shot in the first place it becomes, yeah, well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like the neural pathways there of yeah. how to sync yeah. it all up. It's yeah. the doubt. It's the confidence. It's that's well, it's all the what if there. this goes wrong? Yeah. Yeah. So I spent three months working on skill set, skill set, skill set. Yeah. I hammered that because that's all I ever knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And listen, I had a and you still build mindset with life events. Yeah. But I think that the thing I've learned the most is when you play in front of a, a, the biggest audience is I think you're then, your mindset will really get highlighted. Yeah. Really get highlighted. Yeah. And I think that's when you then, Rob sums it up perfectly. It's the best quote. I really want to claim it as myself, but I yeah. think it, 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 it <laughs> is at school, you get, you can correct me if I say this wrong, at school, you get the lesson, then you do the test. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so at school, you get the lesson, then you get the Oh, there's an e- there's an echo in there. You hear that? <laughs> yeah. So then in football, yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Beautiful. Did yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you actually create that for someone else? Yeah. <laughs> at school, you get so the yeah, lesson school, and the test. So imagine you at school, yeah. uh, you get taught the syllabus, you yeah. get the lesson, and you're yeah. like, right, we're going to do an exam at the end of the year. Yeah. When I joined Sunderland, I got given the test first, yeah. and then the lessons to follow. Yeah, nice. So then in that three months, I've now got the lesson, mm-hmm. but that's if I choose to take the lesson. So a lot of people, I got the test. And nine times out of ten, if people get a bad test, what do we do? We drop the subject and we yeah. we put it to the side. And then you keep getting the same test over and yeah. over again. And it's like, well, am I never good at that test? Because you know, so I've got yeah. the test now. It's like, right, what's the le- and this is how I apply everything to my life now. You get a test, yeah. and the test now could be the negative emotions. It's okay, yeah. well, where's the lesson? Yeah. So football's a bit backwards, and this is why we start the game yeah, with the kids. Yeah. Is I've learned football backwards. Yeah. I get tests and I'm now learning the lessons. Yeah. When I was a kid, it really took me a long time to learn lessons. And one of my biggest drivers now is not, you can never give people lessons, is yeah. how can I put kids in scenarios and help them coach? How can I bring it out of them? Yeah, yeah. Quicker time frame. Yeah. So like, how can I be a mentor yeah. to these so they can learn it in a quicker time frame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had people that, Rob being one, my wife being one, that gives you the right bit of information at the right time that yeah. turns everything around. Yeah, 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 There's yeah. times where you thought, I just pack this in. This isn't yeah. for me. I read every, I was getting shipped out in Jan on loan. Yeah. That was me done. That was me <laughs> suddenly in career. <laughs> one and done. Yeah. Um, like that was, that. so I read it all. Like I consumed it all. So like, that was that was the biggest thing for me is, I, I went through it. I thought I was done. I was yeah. planning my route out. Yeah. I had teams going, yeah, we'll come back. And I just thought, I thought I found my level. Yeah. Really, I found my level here. I just yeah. needed to work on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why, I, that's why with Rob, I sat at the end of Game Academy, I'm, I'm, I, and I love it. Yeah. It's because imagine I do leave. I don't ever play for this club. I'm carrying yeah. that for the rest of my life. Yeah. When then sort of meet someone like Rob, I meet my wife, my mum and dad. They help bring out the best of me. Is there a massive difference, well. Luke, between the skill set in League Two compared to the Championship? I always think about that. Is there that, that big a difference in the skill set between these players here and these players here? Maybe just... Because I'm sure you've played with or trained with some players that were unbelievably talented that are still in League 2 or didn't go beyond that. I say speed and mindset. Really? Speed of play, so it gets a little bit quicker. Yes. You can adjust that pretty quickly, but that's yeah. the mindset of it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I've been in the academy since seven. Yeah. I, I've, I, got, I, know, I can count on one hand how many coaching sessions I got on the mindset yeah they all came from your dad 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that yeah, gave me yeah. way more than that. I mean, yeah. so my mum, my dad, my sister. But like, yeah. in terms of football, no one coaches you that. Yeah, it's, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, they just expect you to know it. Yeah. They see you with a bit of talent and then, the, yeah. Yeah, so I started going, right, instead of There's working, probably some players that you played with in the academy who were like, how the fuck did they not make it? Yeah. Because the players that probably didn't make it at all, who were fucking... So it's the ones that are like, they're the next best thing. Yeah. They're, 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 they they never live up to that. Yeah. It's... Because it's, 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 they're not trained... Potentially. Like, I, listen, yeah. you, everyone, you, you have to treat everyone's scenario. Like, I'm not going to speak about other people. But yeah. It's, when people don't hit... Like, you see people dominate abroad. Yeah. They come to England, they find it hard. Like, look, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah. to Chelsea. <laughs> you tell yeah. me between Chelsea and Man City, what was the problem with the skill set, bro? You didn't just bring out the skill set over yeah. the course of a year. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all mindset or the way someone's treated and the environment they're put into. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, right, how can you recreate that? Yeah. How can you recreate that in a small circle? So yeah. my small circles, mum, dad, wife, kids, yeah. um, friends, family, Rob. Ha- make your small circle great. Create that environment. That yeah, yeah, out yeah, best. yeah, yeah. So now, for example, if I'm struggling with something, I tap into Rob. Yeah. I'll tap into the the tools he's given me. Yeah. I've yeah. not only, when I do the coaching, I, I go through my tools again. Yeah. Okay, lads, I'm feeling this. Um, or I, I went through a game the other day. I was like, lads, I I bottled this decision. I went against my instincts. Mm-hmm. This is why. Mm-hmm. This is what I did. This is how I'm going to get back to it. Yeah, nice. So I, I have tools now where my little girl's a tool on the weekend. Yeah. I look over, it relaxes me, makes me present, makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah, changes yeah. my focus. I reset. Yeah. yeah. People uh, get stuck in internal narrow channels. So they focus on one thing. Yeah. Yeah. These are things we talk about in football or the running commentary in the head. Yeah. Um, I have a running commentary in my head. When I'm playing badly, what I realise is my commentary stops. I focus on an isolated incident. Oh, I didn't sure. realise that. Someone asked me a question near the game academy yeah. call and he coached that out of me. I yeah. tried coaching that's it, he coached mad, that out of me. He's that's a legend. Mad. Yeah, that's I didn't, mad. I didn't even realise that. I went, that, this is one of the best calls ever. Like my self development. I went, to, I'm there to coach them and he coached me. Yeah. There's that openness, like, hey. By heck, just I, asking you a question. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, I didn't know. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, I think it was Austin, wasn't it? <laughs> nice. Um, but the way like he brought out that, I was yeah. like, wow. But yeah. I didn't know that about me, that I had a running commentary in my head. Yeah. So sometimes when they say, look, you need to be a bit more vocal, I can't do, I then have to switch out of here to go vocal. Yeah. So if, I, we say to the boys, right, commentate in your head, yeah. or commentate out loud. Yeah. Either way, one's really good at staying present. Yeah. Um, how to build confidence again, you have a good, you have to have a good, really good relationship with failure. You got to yeah. love failure. Yeah. Um, and you love failure by just fucking extracting lessons, right? Everything's uh, extracting uh, lessons. Extract everything out of yeah. you, anything and everything. Yeah. Let's um let's talk football really quickly. Who's the best player you've ever played with? Uh we had Eze at Wickham. Oh shit. He was good. Yeah. He was really good. Yeah. He He's a baller. He just saw the game differently. Yeah. Um, and he would only been about fucking eighteen then. Yeah, he just he just saw the game. Played against Moussa Dembele, he was the strongest guy ever. Oh, the midfielder? Yeah, I got a picture of me rugby tackling him. The right. midfielder from Spurs? Yeah, yeah, I got a picture of me just arm yeah. away, just put him to the ground. Is he one of the best players you played against then? Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, do you know what I, I love? The reason I love playing football is I love getting lost in the game. Yeah. I, th- I just find it, it's just, a, I just study it. Yeah. Like I play against, um, like the, when we played Rotherham the other day, they quite direct. Yeah. You know, their strikers are six. Plus, I'm only five eleven. Yeah, the had uh, Hugo was on. Hugo, they brought on Eves. Yeah, I'm like right Eves there. is a fucking big, but he had a fucking stink when he came up. Like, Jesus Christ! Yeah, you had a man. But I was like, right, how can I st- study these guys? Because well, they're quite, even though they're both fucking big, burly strikers, they're both the build's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like, how can I individually study these guys to yeah. benefit? And are you doing that then? Oh, I love it. Yeah, and no one tells you to do that though. No, no I just do it. No, I love it. Yeah. So like, how can I give myself all the information relevant? Um. You want to what talking about performance relevant and irrelevant cues. That's the thing you deal with in games. It's brilliant. Yeah. That's you know what you concentrate on, what you don't concentrate on. Yeah. There's so much stuff out there to concentrate on. Yeah. Because concentrate on the fans, concentrate on the booing, or concentrate on your body language, where you're gonna go, what you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on how you're concentrate. So do you dial out from the can you do you find it fairly yeah. easy to dial out from the fans then? Yeah, I love it. Well I said, did you hear that chant in the weekend? You were like, no. No, I can't hear any chant. I didn't hear many chants on the weekend. But can you hear the players? Mm, at times. Can you hear the gaffer? No. No, not at all. Unless you dial out. Depends. So I dial in and dial out of things that help me. Yeah. Uh, depends where the ball is. Yeah. It's not always conscious either. Yeah. So I will dial in a lot into my own narrative in my head. Yeah. Of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, when I get, maybe when I have a, I try to have a, when the ball's dead, mm-hmm. I try to communicate to other people. Mm-hmm. The ball goes out. Communi- so, a little cue for me is the b- when the ball goes out, I communicate with someone. Yeah. When the ball's in play, I'm communicating with myself. Yeah. Trying to 
stay present. Have you done that more since you've been made captain or since you've got, because you're kind of one of the older players now, eh? Yeah. That's mad. You, when you came in, you must have been one of the youngest. Yeah, I was joined. Uh, no, that I was, was a fucking. I was joined 23. That's, we had quite an old team then, oh, though, I'm yeah, sure. Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, has it changed, you say? Yeah, has it changed since you've became one of the older players, like you're verbally? Uh, you talk more now than you've ever done? No. Do you not? Do you think I talk a lot? I am, I, I am I talking here because it's a podcast. But you yeah, when I'm watching the game. I? Yeah. Do I? So I don't, I don't know. In it, man, because you're so in it. Yeah. Because you're so in it, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's, a lot, it's, it's instinctive, a lot of it. Yeah. Um, I know I communicate a lot in my head. Yeah. It's a thinking game, like. Uh, yeah. Uh, Is the game different when you're a captain or not? No. It's exactly the same. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed what I do. Yeah. Um, probably be worried if it did because then it's an act. I try to stay potentially. I don't know. Yeah. Retract that statement. Maybe it's not. I don't yeah. know. I've, I've, I haven't really thought about it. Yeah. Listen, it's huge privilege. Yeah. Like, I told my mum and dad that yeah. was, when I they, when they came up, they, they came up and watched it, and like, yeah. I saw the pride in their face. Yeah. And I had a reflection in that moment, like I walked out here five years ago, and I was off within forty five minutes. And now, like, now you're the skipper. So, like, I look back. At I that, mean, that's pretty fucking cool. I look back at that in the championship. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm dead chuffed. Yeah. Like, no one can ever take that moment away from me. Yeah. I know you don't really. I never aimed for it. Yeah. Because I just aim to. I'm here to, to win games. Yeah. If that comes as a consequence, then yeah, that's yeah, yeah. like, yeah, immense pride. But I don't think it. I'd, I'd like to say it doesn't change me. Yeah. Because, I feel like I try. To, I just try to bring the best version of myself. And be the best teammate I can every yeah. day. Yeah. And being a captain, don't get me wrong, is un unbelievable. Yeah. But that shouldn't really change for me. Yeah. Um, don't worry. I still got to. I still need. To, I still need. I still got a lot of work to do on myself. My yeah. leadership skills. Yeah. Um, whether I'm captain or not captain, I'm still working on that. Like I work yeah. on it with Rob. Yeah. Um, how to be a better leader. Yeah. But that won't. That will. I will still work on that. Whether they give the captain man, our man, someone else, like. Yeah. Like I'm in that constant learning of how can I be better for the team. And I got low I I still know how I can get better and what and I'm working on that now. Yeah. Um and like my my brother and my sister, my brother, he's 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 legend two point Yeah. He comes out with some good stuff. He really challenged he he came up You're older than you, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He taught me one of the big, biggest lessons ever and I, I hated for him at the time. We um he so I think it's really important to have mentors and this is what we put in the Inner Game Academy is mm -hmm. we have me and Rob <laughs> Um, we have Rob and I where some Rob will explain things and it blows your mind, but then he'll coach, he's coached me and I'll be like, he's like, look, how'd you do that on the weekend? I really struggled to do it this, but this really worked for me and I'll give how I do it on the weekend. Yeah. So we've got a good balance. Then people get bored of our voice. So we had, we had Jack Wilshire come the other day. Yeah, I'm buzzing that you cancelled Jack Wilshire for me. I can't believe it. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember seeing him on his debut when he was 16. I was fucking blown away. Yeah, so we've got him coming. Blown on, away. And I'm sitting there with a pen and paper going, right, right, taking notes. Oh, so you're learning from them. Yeah, <laughs> mentors are amazing because, like, whatever whatever you're going through in your head, just get out to other people. See yeah. how they dealt with it. Yeah. And that's what we want. We're connecting players to other players because yeah. I had mentors that I recall gave me information at the right time that changed my game. Yeah. So I was like, I, I, I would, like, that was amazing. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. And I'll go to someone else. And they keep giving you, so it's like, right, recreate that. So we recreate that in the game academy where people come in and we connect them. Why do you connection. think that not everyone is into this? Because I'm into well, it, I get it. So this is the irony, is I say this to Rob, and I shouldn't really say this yeah. when we're trying to get many players on board. Is ego? No, no, I wouldn't have signed up to what was my in the game academy course. Really? And it's because of my ego. Because you're too busy, what? So you when worry people about say, what, listen, yeah. I don't really want to sign up, I'm like, I completely understand, because I wouldn't have done They're like, but you're telling me to something. Yes. I know it's really paradoxical. But I'm yes. really honest. Yeah, is I understand it, but only thing I say to you is, we're here in five years' time. I think it's partly because of the level of uncertainty in in no, football. I, think it's the ego. Uh, for yeah. me, well, I, I speak for myself. Is my yeah. ego? Yeah, I, I shouldn't I need this. Oh, I, I yeah. don't need this. What yeah. do I need this for? Mindset. Yeah. 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 Woo -woo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's really annoying. It took for me to fall down a lot of holes, mm -hmm. my injury, to realize what was wrong. Yeah. What I, no. Not what, was, what I didn't understand, what I didn't yeah. know, yeah. what education I needed. Um, it's quite a macho, for, it's a very macho place in a football. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes, it's really, I don't know if it's the same as you, it takes you to fall apart to then realise I need help. Yeah. But it's like, well, what if we could not fall apart and then soften yeah. the curve? Yeah, it kind of becomes, for me, it was like I knew I should do something, but then it wasn't until it became a fucking must yeah. that I did. 
yeah. and I don't think you have to wait for things to be bad to want to get better. Yeah. Would well, you edit? Do you edit your podcast? No, I don't. Yeah. Why not? Too good. Yeah. I don't know how to. Well, other, other people. Can <laughs> I don't do know how to. I. Yeah. Other people can do it for us. I. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, if someone can do it better, then why don't you tap into that? Yeah. It's the same thing. Better, faster. But we all, it's the, I had it. I can remember. I, I was like, well, I want to do it myself. Yeah. I tried getting down. I want to get down to scratch. And I never yeah. refused a golf lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you refusing a golf lesson? There you go. That's mad, it's isn't ego. it? But I'm like, now I'm like, right, Rob does it. It's like fast track. Why would you not want to? Like a cheat code. We go to a theme park. What it's do you want to do? You want to get everybody get the fast track. I, it is a cheat code. I have this thing that I learned called, um, I call it who, not how. Instead of thinking, how do I do that? You're like, well, who's already done it? Who's already yeah. there? Who can open a door for me? Yeah. Who can get me a ticket for that? Because it's sold out. I got a ticket. There was, down, like, <laughs> who not how? Right. Like, we're always thinking, how do I get better at that? Well, like, who's already better? Who's already done it? Who's already learned it? Who can open doors? Who's got a contact? There was the other day I was I was looking at an event. Um, at the, I, was looking, I was trying to book a ticket on a Joe Dispenza event, right? Yeah. And it was sold out. And I was like, it was sold out with 10,000 people. This is a meditation event. 10,000 people at 600 quid a ticket. Six million quid for three days, right, this guy. And I was like, fuck, it's been sold out for months. So I actually, who could get me a ticket for this? And I texted a girl, um, Lindsay, that I know, she, she got us a ticket like that. And she was like, don't share the link with anybody because you're not supposed to get these tickets. And it said, no. <laughs> it's in Switzerland as well. It's in Basel. Oh, my brother lives there. I I'm, really? Yeah, no problem. Lives in Switzerland? Yeah, does, yeah. Shit, that's my, I Basel. So I, th this whole concept of who, not how, it's huge. Feels like a little cheat code. Like, I heard someone say, like, learning from your mistakes is expensive. But I tell you, you can learn from someone else's fucking mistakes. It's huge. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, I like huge. who, not how, yeah. It's huge. like, Go to a theme park. You want to get the ride as quick as you can. Of course so you, you do. Pick for the fast track. And so I sometimes you have to fucking pay the cost of entry in it. So go for the fast track. Well, yeah. why would you not want to get to? And I've learned that it took. It's actually me, cheaper to pay for the fast track than it is to figure it out yeah. yourself. It took me to twenty five to learn that. Yeah. But little like little examples is my brother. My brother's always been a mentor, um, and he'll, he'll tap. He'll, like, I played a game. It's the best lesson I ever learned. I played a game and we lost four 0 to Sheffield Wednesday away, and he watched it back. I did okay. Yeah. Like, I didn't make any huge blinding mistakes. That, And he went, Luke, what do you think? I went, I did okay. Like, obviously, I, I could have... he goes, I'm really disappointed. I've gone, like, why? Yeah. I lost 4-0. Like, sorry, mate. Like, I can't win yeah. at all. Yeah. And he went, no, the fact is, you went 4-0 down. Yeah. And you didn't connect to anyone. I watched your body. When that fourth goal went in, I watched. Your head was down. Felt sorry for yourself. And he goes, you do all this work on leadership. Mm -hmm. What the hell did you do when you went 4-0 down? Focus on yourself. And he went, I went, ah, nothing. He went, yeah. Well, what's the point of doing all this saying you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to be a leader? His brother called you out. Oh, he did. Shit. And I wasn't, I, I went, listen, brother, like, fuck off, mate. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in the mood, just, just got stunk 4 0. You said, I just, so you know, it really like hit me. So I phoned him like three days later. Does part you not go, well, you're not a fucking footballer, so you don't know? Does part you not think that? Uh, No, because. He's your brother. You value his opinion. He, he hit me hard first, because, probably because he was right. But I, I always, if you don't like, if I don't like how I feel, instead of, I don't want to react on impulse. Yes. I'll take a step back. Yeah. So like now, for example, if, if I, my little one does something that annoys me, yeah. I want to react in anger. I'm going to yeah. take a step back. Yeah. And refresh, refocus and go at it from a, yeah. from a lens where I don't want to react and just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, if, if I coach and people ask me a question, I'm not just going to coach for the sake of it. Yeah. I don't know. I'll find out. I'll connect to someone who knows. So my brother said that and I've gone, ah, oh, you dick. Um, yeah. So anyways, I said, I, yeah, I phoned him back two, three days later. So I had a thought, and I said, you were right. It was nice. Well, it was all right being right. Well, what would you have done differently? I don't know. And I'll phone you back in three days when you thought about it a bit more, and I'm like, <laughs> so it's really giving me... But, like, in football, it's like this, not many people put you on the spot like that, to see that sort of level. And this is why I think mentors are huge. Because mm. no one else... And this is why this is crucial, and you'll see why it is... It hit me hard, really hit me. I was, like, I was disappointed. I never connected with anyone. So anyway, fast forward. Do you know when's the next time we played Sheffield Wednesday? Playoffs. Playoffs, semi finals. You know what happened? What? The one nil up, cruising. They scored with ten minutes left. Yeah. Same ground. The home game. Away. Was it a away game? So same ground, there's ten minutes left, we're ten minutes away from Wembley. They've scored. And they've got all the iPhones out. Oh, I remember Paddy scored, didn't he? Yeah, but we're ten we we we've just conceded. Yeah. Like it should be game over with the momentum, the yeah. atmosphere, and I've yeah. just gone head's gone down and I've gone played at this ground before. Your brother's gonna You remembered. My, bro my brother's watching. Yeah. So I went and connected with um one of the players. What do you think? It doesn't even have to be. It doesn't even have to be game. You don't even have to know what to say. I didn't know what to say. I said, yeah. "What do you think?" I needed. It was really good because you. You said, "What do you think?" That's mad. Yeah, yeah I said. That's no, I mad. Like, I said, "What do you think?" And he'll recall it. He went. I don't know. 
and said, yeah, we're really against it. Like, we were getting hammered. Yeah. Ways and ways. And I went, he goes, I, I don't know how to turn this around. Yeah. I said, mate, just one decision at a time. Get it right, and we'll yeah. switch, switch, switch the momentum yeah. a little bit, bit by bit. Can't do it hugely, just bit by bit. We'll just keep making the right decisions. And... um and we just had a connection, yeah. and it helped me, yeah. and it helped him because we talked about it after the game. Yeah. I'm not this. I'm not saying we went and scored because of it, but as a, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, my brother's a mentor. He coached me at a time where I didn't think I needed coaching. Yes, because sometimes you don't think we need coaching. He saw something from another point of view, yeah, and changed it, and yeah. it helped me in that game. Yeah, and now, for example, I, I got up to, we got coaches that coached on the nines, tens, eleven. Um, I got up to him. I said, listen. You see, he came up to me the other day. He went, like, your left foot really surprised me. Didn't know it was that good. <laughs> I went, thanks very much. But I said, if you ever see anything in the game you think I can improve, let me know. Went, yeah. Really? I went, Honestly, <laughs> I got up to the 23s coach. Yeah. I go, what do you think of the game? Yeah. He's brilliant as well. Like, yeah. the way he sees the game is amazing. I go, listen, what do you think? And he coached me the other day through this goal, and it was phenomenal. Yeah. We went, we went through it in slow mo. He goes, look at your hip position. Look at that. And I'm like, I'm now, I want to be coached by everyone. Really? That's I amazing. Want to coach yeah. me, abuse me, but give me some feedback so I can go off something like I'm yeah. there. We, we actually hired a business coach recently and everyone's like, why have you, why are you doing that? You're killing it. I was like, I can't see. There's blind spots. There's blind spots in there. Like too, and you can't see the blind spots. Yeah. You need somebody, you need someone else to um, fix your blind spots. Last question. What's the future look like for Luton 9? The future? Yeah. Uh, the future, I'm, I'm enjoying it day by day. Yeah. Um, Trying to be the best dad I can be. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be the best husband. I'm trying to be the best player and teammate. Mm -hmm. um, position. Talk to me about positions. That's what I was talking about. Because I didn't mention that. You played left back. You played centre mid. You played probably on the wing. You played right back. You played centre back. Like, what was that? Are you bothered? I love it. Yeah. Again, it's that full, you play anywhere. It's that full immersion in the yeah. position, the study in it. Yeah. The, what, what can I do to win? Get better to, here. To win this day, this game. Yeah. And I, I love that. And it's, yeah, I'm just in a constant state of trying to improve, trying yeah. to be be the best version of myself. Yeah. Try to be the best version of You probably not even focus too far down the line. That's what but you're saying. No. You're present. Yeah, I, I, you, I try When I said that question, you're like, oh, I'm just loving now, which is fucking amazing, really. Yeah. And that's my, that's my kind of, my sat nav. Yeah. How am I feeling now? Yeah. Don't go wrong. I still got eyes on the future. I'm yeah. And what's the next step? Premier League, you know, I want to do it here. Yeah. But it's also like, how, how am I now? I'm like, I love now. Mm. I still, I, I'm in a state of where I really want to improve and be better at everything. Yeah. But I, I just love now. And like, let's get in the fucking Premier League. Yeah. When with my kids, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm with them. When I'm yeah. a team with my teammates, I'm like, I'm the best team. I'm gonna be the best player. I'm gonna yeah. learn. Yeah. And then when I go into the match states, the same thing. So I'm trying to, um, I'm just trying to be a better version of myself. Um, I, I'm honestly, I love it and. For any Sunderland fans that are listening, like I always have, just gratitude. How are the lads? How are the lads? How are the lads? I just love, I love, I love the North. Yeah. I think it's amazing what you guys have done for me, the way you've brought me in as your own, and the family that you've helped me raise. And um, I love this journey. And I love it, mate. You make me all emotional. Yeah, thank you so mate, much. You? No, thank sorry, you so much, mate. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and now, uh, well, when you were going to come in last time, I was going to sing "Rocking All Over League One" because that's what they used to sing in it. Yeah, Do you like that song, by the way? Oh, it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, it gives me a goosebumps. Can you hear it when it's in the crowd? Oh, yeah. that, you, no, I can dial into you that can't one. You can dial into that one. I, I hear my name. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> mate, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.